The question is not agreed by majority of the two groups of members. I declare the motion negatived. On. Second member's motion, formulating a population policy. Members who wish to speak in the motion debate will please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Kwok Him to speak and move the motion. Mr. Kwok Him. Members, order please. Mr. Kwok Him. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Population is an important element um, of um, a community or of a country. Is um, is um, distribution um, uh, affects the um, um, the um, prosperity of the place or the country. Um, if um, um, there is a problem of overpopulation, then of course um, there won't be enough resources. Um, um, for the people, but then if um, um, there's an aging population or if um, the population is too small, there will be an undersupply of um, manpower resources and as a result, uh, social and economic development will be hindered. Hong Kong lacks natural resources. We have a lot of people, but um, land resources are scarce. And in fact, um, the people are um, the cornerstone of uh, Hong Kong's success. It's important that we have um, um, a population policy. In fact, um, um, in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong po the population is about 7.7 .7 million. In fact, according to the census, in fact, the population uh, increased by 1.96 million over um, a two-decade period, 1981, 3.3%, the birth rate, and then 2011, 0.6%. And um, in fact, a population growth has been slowing down over the years. President, since the 1970s, the birth rate in Hong Kong uh, has been um, um, on the decline. And in fact, um, in the past um, two decades, the birth rate in Hong Kong um, was um, on the decrease in 2003. Um, um, the figure reached a um, historical or record low, 901. And uh, in fact, from 2012 to 2040, it is uh, anticipated that um, the birth rate in Hong Kong will still be on the low side. Uh, in fact, the birth rate in Hong Kong is lower than that in developed economies like Sweden, Japan, Australia, the UK, and the US. And on the other hand, with advancement in medical um, technology, with um, better um, hygiene, um, in fact, the life expectancy is increasing, and Hong Kong is one of um, the cities with um, 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 an F, uh, with a high, very high um, life expectancy. By twenty twenty three, um, Hong Kong will be um, uh, um, a super um, aged society according to um, United Nations standards. And uh, of course, we understand that human resources are important uh, for the economic development of Hong Kong. But then, um, our the, the supply of manpower resources will decline because Hong Kong is becoming an aging society with fewer children. And according to the latest um, estimates, um, in fact, um, our population, uh, um, the um, working population, is. Um, uh, growing very slowly, but then this figure will peak uh, in 2018, and by 2041, um, the number will uh, drop to 3.4 million. In 2012, um, the figure was 3.49 million, and according to the uh, 2018 Manpower Projection Report,
even when the、um, working population peaks in 2018, there will still be a slight shortage of、um, labor supply in Hong Kong, and this shortage. Of labor supply will deteriorate year after year. This will affect Hong Kong's economic development, and also productivity will shrink. Internal consumption will also shrink, and as a result, government revenue will drop. And um, government um, this will affect the sustainability of um government finances. And、so government must look at all these、uh, matters in、um, formulating a population policy.、Um, the birth rate is、um, always on the decline.、Uh, our demographic structure and our family structure、um, will be affected. Um, uh, in fact, um, um, the aging problem will、um, deteriorate very rapidly, and.、Um, And fam families will、um, not be so able to take care of、um, elderly family members.、Uh, young children will have a very heavy burden, and as a result, families may need to shift some of their responsibility to take care of the elderly to the social welfare system. Previously, we thought that、um, we would. Um, 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 bring up children、um, to provide for our old age, but now we know that um, um, the people can only look、um, after the future generation, not the older generation. And then concerning、uh, the two age groups, forty-five to forty-nine, fifty to fifty-four, the number is about one point three million, and they account for. Thirty-two percent of our population, but then in the next decade or so, they will all um、uh, move towards um retirement age. So um the um aging problem will um accelerate. President, we are facing um a lot of challenges. Including an aging society with fewer children, the DAB has、uh, recently completed a report, and in fact, we've already given a copy of this report to the CS4A. And in this report, we、um, made、uh, or we have made a number of、um, proposals. For example, a three-tier retirement protection system, a subsidy for um, um, bringing up children, and also schools um, um, uh, to be、um, set up in Shenzhen to reduce the、um, cross-border student population. But of course, um, I uh, will uh, only be um, um, elaborating on some of these proposals, and the other proposals will be、um, explained by other DAB members. I understand that、um, the government has already started work on the formulation of a population policy. But then I think、uh, we need to have、um, extensive discussion in society. Um, some um, population um, objectives were laid down、um, in 2003.、Uh, are they outdated? Should we update them? In 2003, the government wanted to upgrade the quality、um, of Hong Kong's population so as to、um, facilitate Hong Kong's development into a world-class city and a knowledge-based economy. But then, at that time, the、um, objective was.、Um, Um, based on the de development of the economy, but now we have、um, a number of、um, other factors: new arrivals, family reunion, an aging population, and so on and so forth. So the DAB is of the view that the government should、um, try to come up with、um, objectives which can balance social and economic development, and this policy should.、Um, Include three elements. First of all, uh, uh, and a policy to、um, deal with the problem of aging population. Second, priority for Hong Kong people. In other words, to boost the local birth rate as、um, the um, preferred uh, measure to um, in, uh, to um, 
uh, solve the aging population problem. Uh, bringing people from overseas or other places should be, uh, only be of secondary importance. And third, um, uh, helping up new arrivals um, adapt to society and uh, facilitating family reunion. Mr. President. Um, population policy straddle different policy areas. This is the um, and in fact, um, population po a population policy is a very um, complicated issue. And meanwhile, um, um, society is um, ever changing. And so DAB thinks that there should be a dedicated department to closely monitor changes in. Um, uh, population trends and to um, carry out surveys and to analyze the data collected. And uh, this dedicated department must also make sure that relevant policies are implemented um, smoothly and in a timely manner and timely reviews need to be carried out. I understand that the steering committee on population policy has been reconstituted and there are now non-official members sitting on the steering committee. But then um, population policies are very important policies and uh, long-term policies. And like housing policies and education policies, we can't see the effects overnight. Uh, and um, uh, policy reviews and um, adjustments have to be carried out from time to time. And so the steering committee should be um, or this um, or should be a standing um, mechanism, and there sh must be um, funding and administrative support for this um, committee to uh, facilitate its work. They be uh, adopts an open mind with regard to the design of this standing mechanism. What is important that must, is that there must be a dedicated department or organization to um, um, formulate and follow up on um, our population policy. We must not have um, different departments and bureaus working on their own without any coordination. In 2003, um, 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 the government said that there would be a population policy and um, the, the policy, um, um, uh, in fact, um, is not effective and um, in fact, um, uh, um, uh, in fact um, it's not effective. Um, Mr. I now propose the question to you that is that the motion moved by Mr. Ipokin be passed. Dr. Kenneth Chen, Mr. James Tome, Ms. Claudia Mo, Mr. Ipkin Yu, Mr. Gary Fan, Ms. Sitholm, Mr. Frankie Yik, and Mr. Kenneth Leung wish to move amendments to this motion. And Mr. Tommy Jung wishes to move an amendment to Mr. Frankie Yik's amendment. This council will now proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. I now call upon the above members to speak in the above order, but they may not move uh, amendments at this stage. Dr. Ken Chan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. The UN uh, and the academia have conducted many years of studies and analysis on population policy. They've come to a consensus. Population policy is not a set of data. Um, population po policy is not just for economy or for, for improving labor productivity. As an academic issue, um, population policy is about life, birth, immigration, uh, migration, change in population structure, the trends, and so on and so forth. Population policy is also about the full life cycle, people's well-being, uh, and planning of all these. The international consensus is that population policy should be people-oriented. Take uh, it should take care of the well-being of all the, the whole population to let people live a full and meaningful life. Now, Mr. Ipcock here mentioned the population policy in 2003. It was no policy at all. It was really a rough attempt um, which had no conclusion, and the administration didn't communicate with 
the, the, the people of Hong Kong, there was no consensus, let alone um, the uh, proposal, uh, or let alone any plan or um, uh, detailed policy. Now, Mrs. Kerry Lam is now leading a committee to work on population policy. With regard to discussion on population policy, I would like to mention the uh, Catholic uh, Church or the Catholic Diocese, uh, which has given uh, a pub which has published a report. Now, to, um, there is a need to solve social conflicts arising from population policy. The administration should formulate a long-term population policy. It shouldn't just emphasize on economic benefits. It should be people-oriented. It should take care of the well-being of uh, different commu uh, different uh, social groups. We have a population of more than seven million. Sixty percent of them were born in Hong Kong. 40% moved into Hong Kong from other places. Since the handover, we've heard that the um, SARG has time and again uh, said that there is aging population and decline in population, decline, a decline in fertility. Then the administration introduced the migrant scheme, the um, uh, quality migrant scheme, the capital investment entrance scheme, the no, um, non uh, the, the um immigration arrangement for non non local graduates so on and so forth the people of hong kong are worried as said by mr yip uh, does the administration give priority to the people of hong kong and does the administration the administration care for the locally born people hong kong people uh, these um, immigration policy or this sudden introduction of immigration policy to make up for aging population, for to make up for low fertility, um, we really don't know how much they can contribute to the well-being of Hong Kong. The majority of the people of Hong Kong feel that they are being fooled. They have become the safety net of other people. The um, SAR report, or rather SAR passport, has become a convenience for the mainland immigrants. Uh, the administration just opened the door to mainland immigrants. And how much do these immigrants understand Hong Kong? How many of them will stay in Hong Kong? How many uphold the core value of Hong Kong? How many of them respect the system of Hong Kong? That's why last week I uh, moved a motion debate on the quality of tertiary education. We need to make sure that Hong Kong students who are matriculated um, should be given subsidized places in the universities instead of leaving them to the destiny of the education market and let them fend, fend for themselves. With regard to encouraging uh, fertility, uh, the administration is willing to provide tax allowances to the middle class uh, so that they can give birth, more birth to their children. Uh, I am one of the um, person who, uh, who has benefited from that. Does the administration pay more attention to the well-being of the middle-income groups, whereas the administration doesn't care about the provision of child care uh, subsidy to the low-income families? Even if the, the, such a policy is unintended, this gives people the impression that we are given, uh, we, we are doing a kind of selective breeding. Now, in a uh, question, in a written question, we have seen that many elderly people are waiting for social services. They, they even uh, have died before they, um, they have a chance to receive such service. And there is the problem of inadequate supply of international school places. There is also the issue of uh, individual uh, visit scheme, and they're related to immigration policy. And there is also the um, proposal of one columbarium in one district. There is no planning. People have to share um, the uh, share uh, the uh, bad neighbors. This has caused a lot of conflicts in the community. Um, Mr. Deputy, as for my amendments, uh, my amendment, there are four major points. Apart from preferential policy 
for the middle income groups. I hope that uh, people of different uh, people from different walks of life in terms of child care, quality education, good living environment, there must be good planning. As for the planning for public service, if uh, um, public poli uh, population policy has to be uh, pragmatic and have to be implemented. A democratic uh, demographic structure of different districts should be studied, and there should be suitable adjustment and uh, in the provision of public service accordingly. As for nurturing of talents, uh, the admission schemes have given people the impression that they are focused on the northern side of the border. And there is no um, total involvement uh, of the people. Um, this kind of policy is just creating conflict. As for the one-way permit arrangement, I know that the one-way permit um, is regarded as the, um, uh, the the matter of the mainland. Um, each um, in the mainland, each. Um, province, each municipality is responsible for their um, for their pop uh, immigration policy. Now, since the end of 2012, from 1997 to the end of 2012, more than 760,000 people have come to Hong Kong under the one-way one -way permit. The administration says there is no need to change the policy; it only exchanges uh, changes views uh, and reflects. Uh, the view of the people of Hong Kong, but uh, how th how do they do it? We really don't know. Now the mainlanders, when they come to Hong Kong for a short while, or for long for good for long term stay, uh, the decision is in the mainland. Now even if we do not amend the basic law, we need to talk to the mainland. So therefore, I raise a fourth point, which is about one way permit. I hope that. The SARG will actively pursue the cause with the CPG and the relevant ministries of the mainland uh, so that they can enhance the approval pol procedures. Now there are different policies, different rules, and there are kickbacks and also um, bribes. If you have the money, you know somebody, then you can jump the queue. Uh, we, have we have seen uh, this and we have heard such complaints. Hong Kong is uh, accepting uh, immigrants from the mainland. We need to have uh, the say. As for population policy, it is very complicated. Uh, but in Hong Kong, there are many academics, in particular Professor Wong, Professor Xiu, and Professor Chen, and other uh, professors in uh, majoring in social sciences, uh, specializing in social sciences. Um, they have made, made a number of suggestions on population policy. One is Hong Kong Mobile, making a global population. In fact, this publication is available in the library of the LegCo. And my speech um, is in fact based on the thinking of these academics. Professor Nelson Chow complained to us many times. He said that when he um, um, attended the uh, conferences, the government officials just know nothing. Okay. Mr. James Toh, Mr. Deputy, I remember in 1997 I uh, went to give a talk um, in a university in the U.S. with uh, Professor Lao Siuka. At that time, he um, had not joined the government yet. And on the plane, um, he was reading a book, and I asked him what book he was reading, and he said the book was about uh, an aging population. And he said, James, um, you know, this is uh, going to be a very um, big problem for Hong Kong and for many places in the world. You know, um, Professor Lau was a professor in sociology, and he said that there would be far-reaching political and economic implications. And that was um, uh, when I started to be aware of uh, when I started to be aware of the problem. And when I came back, I talked to my party. I said that uh, the problems could be uh, very serious. 
Five years ago, we complete uh, uh, a preliminary report was uh, completed. So, um, now I call it a preliminary report, but um, in fact, um, uh, there are several um, dozens of recommendations in that report, and that report has been um, forwarded to the government. The DP is of the view that the government must um, try to. Um, um, do something uh, before it's too late, or there will be very serious problems and implications. Now, many people um, will think of um, the um, idea of uh, encouraging um, people to give birth to children. In fact, the DP has um, uh, looked at um, different places in the world. Now, we, we the DP is neutral with regard to um, such a policy. But then uh, we are of the view that for those who really want to have children. Um, uh, uh, the obstacles um, should be removed for them. We understand that in our public hospitals, uh, there are 7,000 couples queuing up for um, scientifically assisted reproduction. But then the waiting time or queuing time is uh, over 30 months, and uh, that's because of um, inadequate resources. So the queue uh, at um, public hospital is um, is very long, but then at private hospitals the the um, fee is very high, eighty thousand um, dollars per treatment. In fact, uh, I want to say that um, in fact I have um, myself um, tried to um, 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 have access to um, this um, surface, and uh, in fact, uh, I can tell you that the uh, fee uh, was uh, really high, even um, to the middle class. But of course, um, but and, and concerning them, this baby of mine, um, that, that um, is not um, 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 by um, scientifically assisted reproduction. But then um, there are, um, you know, there are certain. Um, Constraints, forty years old, uh, or three uh, treatments, and so sometimes uh, when um, young people want to establish their careers first, and they want to, um, then they want to um, um, buy their homes first, and um, when uh, they really want to have babies, then um, they they. Um, they they have a a lot of anxiety and worries, and in fact, I I can tell you that in fact uh, some officials um uh, in fact um started um um telling me about a decade ago that um if um people want to have babies they should um do so um um instead of waiting till they they are too old. Now anyway, um concerning. Um, people coming in to Hong Kong. Um, many people uh, do agree that Hong Kong people, sh Hong Kong should have um, uh, the say. Um, so, uh, in other words, in fact, we want um, to bring in um, younger people. Now, uh, in my view, uh, if the um, Central government um, is willing to um, accede, is willing to accede to our request. Then maybe we need not have that um, um, that power uh, to to decide whom to accept and whom to reject. But of course, if we have that power, then we will be better able to um, plan the development, the future development of. Um, our community. Now we have an, a problem of an aging population. We have to make reference to the experience in other places. We need to set up um, funds to uh, try to deal with this problem. Now, for example, um, according to the OECD report for the Netherlands, uh, a quarter of the population will um, be aged um, in 2030, and so they have set up a fund. Um, and every year, uh, an injection is uh, made into the fund for the provision of retirement protection. And Ireland has announced that one percent of its GDP will be injected into a fund to um, cope with the expenditure in the future associated with an aging population. Now, Mr. Deputy, we have to act now. The later we act, um, the the later. Society 
can feel、um, assured. So we we must not drag our feet. This is an urgent、um, issue. And also, you need time to explain the problems and the solutions to the public. The public need time to、um, understand all the implications. In fact, many sociologists have pointed out that、um, the community、uh, has to be、um, prepared for all these、um, problems because、um, in future. Uh, if we still have a, a democratic system, then、um, in、uh, in future investments、um, in society expenditure um, uh, um, um, made by the government will be lopsided. Now, so maybe、uh, you,、um, Mr. Deputy, you may say you and I、uh, will be open-minded. We will、um, believe that. Uh, investments should be for the future, for the、um, future generations. But many people will still be worried that、um, there will be、uh, a, a lot of investments required、uh, to take care of the elderly. So we have to、um, start work early. Or else, in future. Uh, the political and economic picture may be seriously distorted, and、um, th there will be a lot of things that the government、uh, won't be able to do because of political accountability. For example, at that time, elderly persons may 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 um um. I have their complaints, Mr. Deputy. I wish to say that、um, concerning um, um, doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women and the babies they give birth to, Uh, no, I, I want to say that in fact, this is one way to slow down the aging of our population. Now, now if we can have more of these、um, big babies and children coming to Hong Kong to study and、um, be integrated into Hong Kong's educational, cultural, social, and、um, economic systems, then、uh, I think we should welcome that. They they are in fact permanent residents of Hong Kong, and if we discriminate against them, if we draw a line here and draw a line there against them, if we impose a lot of restrictions on them, then society will not、um, be、uh, stable and prosperous. So we should be well prepared, and. Um, a consensus should be fostered in、uh, society on the population policy. Ms. Claudia Moon, I think young girls in Hong Kong do not like、uh, raising a family. Perhaps、uh, one of、uh, the main reasons is well known to everybody, and that is they don't have confidence in the future. We're not talk about a physical cliff, rather a confidence cliff. Of course,、uh, money is an issue, but、uh, we have not、uh, reached the stage of having a physical cliff. Well,、uh, fertility rate in Hong Kong has always been low, but in recent years it has、uh, reached、um, a record low. Now we have、uh, importation of talents and investors and quality migrants、uh, into Hong. Hong Kong, and if、uh, you come to work for a certain company and you've stayed here for seven years, then you're entitled to apply、uh, to become a permanent resident. Well, eight percent of our imported、um, immigrants 
are from the mainland. Uh, quality migrants, not too many, maybe. Well, we have a quota of 1,000 per year investors. Well, many of them are here to uh, speculate on residential properties, uh, checking up our property prices. So I don't know whether they have do us more good than harm. Of course, we have the problem of fake marriages and people who uh, divorce after they have got a permanent residency. And according to some uh, tabloid, uh, people can uh, get a fake work visa using $600,000. So, well, uh, we have immigrants moving into Hong Kong, and I think in many places they have um, common uh, measures. Uh, babies are born uh, of a non to a non uh, resident parents in Hong Kong. I'll leave it uh, to another colleague to come in on. I'm very concerned about the 150 mainlanders coming to Hong Kong for family reunion. Before 1997 or after that, for a short while, we have reasons to believe that there are still uh, many cases of family reunion. Well, because of uh, cultural revolution, uh, families were separated. And uh, there were a lot of family problems, but 16 years after the uh, reunion, you still call them family reunion uh, cases. Yes, uh, it is uh, United Nations recognized uh, human rights. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, have a uh, divetting power of uh, this quota of 150 uh, family reunion cases per day in the past. Uh, I thought it was difficult to say no to um, maternity love or to um, family values. Not until I came back from Macau on a ferry once. There was a new arrival mother sitting next to me. She said uh, she had waited for 15 years because uh, she had uh, to pay 150,000 renminbi in order to uh, fast track her application. Uh, but anyway, uh, she waited for uh, more than a decade to come. So this is still a problem of corruption and bribery. This has nothing to do with Hong Kong. We don't know how long the queue is across the boundary. We don't know uh, about uh, the bribery and corruption taking place over there because of one country, two systems, uh, we cannot interfere. But in recent years, we have heard more and more of such cases. Now, if you need evidence, well, it may not be uh, so um, so solid as to be uh, admissible in court, but we have heard many cases among the 150 uh, one-way permit uh, visas, coming to Hong Kong per day. Now, this is a quota. Uh, each uh, place uh, can uh, fetch anything up to 1 million renminbi or uh, Chinese yuan uh, because of uh, bribery. Well, if uh, there is indeed uh, corruption over there, it's none of our business. We cannot help them to clean up. But then, More and more people are saying that those are fake family reunion cases. They are uh, planted in Hong Kong by means of uh, this scheme. Hong Kong has got uh, almost half a million of underground Chinese Communist Party members in Hong Kong. Well, you may say that these are just rumors. Are they true or not? Well, of course, uh, this is not the court. I am not a lawyer. I cannot uh, show you evidence. But these accusations that uh, they are the people are being planted into Hong Kong. Those who uh, said these uh, were not uh, nobody. They are all veteran uh, journalists.
covering uh, Chinese uh, news, and uh, they are also very veteran uh, uh, academics or people um, uh, in Chinese matters. So why do we need so many underground Chinese Communist parties? Well, we all know so as to dilute our population. to change our way of thinking. The basic law has made it clear that Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy with and is vested with executive power except in defense and foreign affairs. However, the degree of autonomy is getting lower and lower. My amendment reads Given that in accordance with the spirit of the basic law, the Hong Kong SAL government enjoys a high degree of autonomy and is vested with executive power except in defense and foreign affairs, and society generally considers that this should include the power of vetting and approving the entry of immigrants, and the authorities should therefore change the current practice and fully exercise Hong Kong's power of vetting and approving the entry of immigrants. Well, uh, the uh, QTS a quality talent scheme. We of course have to say, uh, you can't say that uh, you can't just claim yourself to be an uh, IT expert. Uh, Beijing authorities cannot uh, claim that they are IT experts. We do the vetting. An article written by uh, Mr. Lam Hang Chi of uh, Hong Kong Economic Times said that. As we all know, with the exception of uh, defense and foreign affairs, Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy. And in general, Hong Kong people want real power to uh, really uh, realize the concept of Hong Kong people in Hong Kong. And this is a legitimate and logical aspiration. Well, these um, sounds familiar. Well, uh, they are planted in Hong Kong to dilute our population. What for? For elections. Directly or indirectly, this is vote rigging. People who believe in uh, communism or mainland uh, ideas are planted into Hong Kong uh, hoping that uh, they can change our mode of thinking and uh, they can influence our ideology. The Chinese Communist Party or the Communist Party would like to seize power, grab power. Uh, first, they must have the army. This is just uh, known to everybody. They need uh, the army and they must uh, uh, control our ideology. Hong Kong is regarded as a spoiled child and then uh, our thinking is not politically correct and they're here to cleanse our thoughts. And uh, there's the motion that we must um, discuss uh, with the main authorities uh, so that we can be involved in the vetting and approval of um, uh, the uh, people coming to Hong Kong under 150 quota. Well, this uh, sounds like begging. Perhaps uh, we have different ways of thinking. I want to say it loud and clear. In no, um, uh, in very clear terms, we do have the right to uh, say who should go into Hong Kong. Mr. President, I want to speak on Hong Kong's population policy. Hong Kong's population policy is lagging behind. In 2003, the administration first formulated its population policy and published a report. At that time, the economy was poor. The consideration by the administration at that time was to reduce public uh, financial uh, that the burden on public finance. Uh, this includes uh, certain um, investment requirement, and the administration proposed to review population policy um, and then issued a report once every two to three years. Have they done so? No, the proposal has not been implemented. Population policy became outdated. In 2010, the administration cancelled the $6.5 million. Um, uh, arrangement for investing in property. And then in 2013, the administration uh, 
uh, announced a zero quota for mainland babies born uh, in Hong Kong to non-residents. And um, the, uh, um, the administration also uh, finally scrapped the uh, policy of regarding medical service as an industry uh, to attract foreigners. Uh, to, the administration has shown uh, that um, has reviewed the policy of um, uh, review the situation of Hong Kongers um, retiring the mainland and also the issue of mainland children born in Hong Kong to non-local residents. The administration has not looked at education. The administration just looked at the burden on public uh, resources and also lo uh, looks at um, human resources as an economic input. But population policy also should also include the role of the family, the issue of aging, retirement, the sharing of social resources, a bet a better population planning and enhancing uh, quality of population, um, and, uh, resolving conflicts in the community. All these boil down to the value of human beings. And this should be reflected in each aspect of human policy. In implementing population policy, there are two major elements. The first is to have a good forecast, and the second is to have a suitable plan in response to the forecast, and that is planning. There is a need to respond in a timely manner. Take education as an example. We are really frustrated. First of all, in terms of forecasts, it is uncertain and confusing. Even if there is a forecast, there is no good planning. We have not seen any vision to, or capability to solve the problem. A good example is cross-border children of cross-border students. With regard to the dealing of cross-border students, it is an example of uh, bad planning. Now, the uh, subcommittee under the House Committee, uh, which is tasked to look after uh, cross-border uh, families, um, the subcommittee asked the administration to follow the matter up in respect of cross-border children and ask for background information of the families. And there should be a um, thematic study on the background cross-border student. And the, and, and the authority should look into whether their parents are, ch are local residents or not. In 2009, the House Committee's uh, report was given, but the uh, Education Bureau did not respond. And in, uh, when the population policy, uh, in terms of population policy, the administration should uh, make projection, should make projection on the demand for uh, mainland, uh, the demand for Hong Kong uh, st school places by mainland children uh, who were born in Hong Kong. Now the administration will look into various measures to increase the number of school places, make use of make better use of school premises. But the Education Bureau didn't do much forecast on cross border children. In answering the question of this council in February, uh, the administration uh, didn't have the background information of cross-border uh, kindergarten children, uh, kindergarten student, primary school children, and secondary uh, school children. They, the administration just does not know whether these children have one parent being a Hong Kong resident or who have uh, or whose parents are not Hong Kong residents or their parents are Hong Kong residents. If there is no information, how can we respond to their needs? Uh, the Bureau is just, um, the, the, the administration just uh, thinks that the demand for school places by cross-border students is a temporary phenomenon. We ha can only see piecemeal measures. Or which are implemented year on a year by year basis. Children born in 2003 
uh, 2007 uh, are admitted into uh, primary school, uh, primary one this year. Between 2007 to 2012, fertility rate has increased substantially, and many of these are children born to non Hong Kong residents. We can expect that the, there will be increase in the number of cross border students substantially. The increase in demand may be in terms of thousands or tens of thousands. And how can Hong Kong produce so many school places, so many school premises? And are we, do we have enough teachers? Everything is just a question mark. We really don't know what will happen next year, not to say the year after next. As for uh, primary school places allocation, suddenly the Bureau asked the bureaus to accept cross district deployment. Uh, and then afterwards, there is a return mechanism. It's just a confusion. Yesterday, it, is, it was reported that the aided schools and government schools in Hong Kong can voluntarily increase two places and set up a list uh, for the cross-border students. I am worried. Um, the cross-border students will have to pass the boundary, the, will have to pass uh, the border and then take um, a train and then cross the harbor to study in, uh, on Hong Kong side. That is entirely possible. Another problem of the um, lack of planning in population policy is there is no planning at all. We can see that our population is aging. According to many studies, the labor force will shrink unless there is a substantial increase in productivity. Um, our living standard will decline. Competitiveness will decline. Our driving force of the economy will decline. In order to enhance productivity, what should we do? A logical conclusion is that we should enhance our education system so that it can uh, drive our economy towards the road of uh, value-added and knowledge-based economy. We need to enhance the training and education of our young people. Why the administration has just formed a committee after much talks? Why the administration has just implemented small class teaching in the primary schools but not the secondary schools. Why the number of subsidized degree and sub-degree places cannot be increased. These problems should have been solved. The decline in population is the golden opportunity for us to enhance our education standard, education provision. Our education system is in a confusion. It's really frustrating. Hong Kong has lost its opportunity to change its education system. As for the ethnic minorities, their children do not have good education uh, in term, uh, and that is a problem we have to face up to. Our population policy should care for each person. They are human beings. They should be treasured. We should respect human value. We should have good planning, we should attach importance to good forecasts, and we should formulate a good policy in order to have hope in the future. Thank you. Mr. Gary Fan. thank you. Um, Mr. Deputy, population policy um, takes precedence over um, education, health, uh, um, uh, and other policies. But then our um, government has been dragging its feet. We have um, um, lost a, a lot of golden opportunities. We do haven't come up with clear targets and objectives to uh, um, keep our workforce competitive. Mr. Deputy, in the past um, decade, um, about 200,000 um, children um, born of um, doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women um, 
keep Hong Kong, and um, uh, and um, we we saw lots of problems, um, uh, lack of school places, and so on and so forth. And also, um, because of um, lack of proper planning, we have seen lots of problems. For example, the Development Bureau is not trying to uh, blindly see some uh, uh, sites for housing development. Um, um, Mr. Deputy, I am um, of the view that um, um, we should take back the powers to vet, approve, review, and reject one-way permit applications, and we should also um, discuss with the central government on initiating procedures for amending the basic law to abolish the right of abode in Hong Kong and by babies born in Hong Kong to doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women. Now, um, we understand that uh, um, um, the original projection was that by 2040, the um, population would reach 8.8 .8 million. But after the 2011 um, census, the CNS department uh, said that uh, um, the population should be 8.47 million in 2040. So, in fact, within a uh, when we're talking about a year, we're talking about a, a discrepancy of 0 0.42 million people. Um, the um, C Y Le before he became C E said that there would be zero quota for um, doubly non permanent resident pregnant women, and so uh, maybe um, another projection will tell us that the um, population uh, will shrink further. In fact, according to one report, um, there will be um, uh, um, a natural. Um, decrease in population of 38,000 from 2011 to 2041. And then um, concerning net um, immigration, 1.44 million. So in other words, in the next three de decades, um, our population growth will mainly rely on uh, immigrants, especially those from the mainland. The ND. Uh, as of the view that um, the OWP system is administered by the mainland and Hong Kong uh, doesn't have the power to vet, approve, and um, review one-way permit applications. This is most undesirable. According to the 2011 census, from 2011, I beg your pardon, from 2001 to 2011, for people coming to Hong Kong on O. WPs, the number exceeded 400,000, and 55 percent of them were between 25 to 44 years old. And also, according to the um, um, uh, situation report on employment for new arrivals, with regard to new arrivals from the mainland, on the whole, the educational level um, is on the low side. Most of the new arrivals from the mainland, um, um, secondary school leavers or below, and only 8% of them have um, attained or uh, uh, completed tertiary education. But then uh, in Hong Kong, 23% of the population um, has completed tertiary education, Mr. Deputy. Uh, for Singapore, 78.2% um, of the um, new immigrants uh, possess tertiary qualifications or above. So how can we compare with Singapore? And also in the same report, Mr. Deputy, over 80% of the new arrivals from the mainland um, are in um, low-skill jobs, for example, sales in the retail sector and also um, um, non-skilled work. Now, our government um, keeps saying that new arrivals can help uh, solve the problem of an aging population. But uh, in reality, new arrivals have become a burden to Hong Kong society and have not um, really helped Hong Kong's future development. The OWP or the scheme is administered by the mainland authorities. Hong Kong has no say at all. Um, the Hong Kong SAR um, has no say concerning um, its population policy. For example, uh, 
Lai Changxing uh, was able to obtain um, an, a Hong Kong SAR um, report. So you can see that, in fact, in, we in Hong Kong must have to say concerning the one-way permit scheme. We must have to say. Now, uh, at the moment, um, I think uh, our, pop, um, our population policy allows um, uh, a very large percentage of mobile population that's not satisfactory, and also um, in um, um, the different cities and municipalities in the mainland, they have their own household systems. Other countries um, have have um, the say uh, with regard to immigrants, but then we do not have the household system um, practiced in uh, cities and provinces and the mainland, and we we. We don't have any say concerning our immigrants, and so in fact we um, have uh, less control over our population than the Macau SAR and also uh, mainland um, provinces, counties, and municipalities. And then there is um, um, the problem of um, babies uh, born of doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women. In uh, 2001, the figure was 620 per year, and then. Um, uh, in uh, and the the number in 2011 was 35,736, 170,000 over the past years. So when um, these um, children uh, reach school age, they come to Hong Kong to study, and as a result, uh, our, um, local children have to um, study uh, in primary schools in other districts this year. Two hundred. Students living in the North District uh, will need to um, go to Tai Po to study. And also for Tai Po and Yunlong, the schools have to increase the class size or to increase the number of classes to deal with um, cross-border or to cope with the influx of cross-border students. So, in fact, why is it that the government has not um, um, uh, uh, anticipated this influx of cross-border children? Why haven't um, we um, prepared ourselves in advance? Si Wai Leung said that he um, would um, deal with the problem. But then, um, you know, every month, at the moment, we still have over 100 uh, doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women coming to Hong Kong to give birth to babies. And in fact, last week, I said in this council that these uh, pregnant women uh, only needed to pay about 100,000 RMB um, as handling fee, and they would be able to um, enroll in self-financing tertiary courses in Hong Kong. And uh, so they would... Um, enroll for such courses, and they would um, stay in Hong Kong to give birth to um, babies. So mainland women will still uh, find various ways and means to come to Hong Kong to uh, give birth to um, babies. Now, I want to say that, in fact, we, we now have a crisis here in Hong Kong. Now, uh, immigration policies should um, try to address the issue of family reunion, and immigration um or formulating an immigration policy uh, will not be um, uh, described as discrimination because no place, no country can accept um, everybody um, uh, who, who wants to um, um, uh, go to that place or country. Now, for new arrivals, we do treasure them. At the same time, we have to um, make sure that they um, uh, uh, identify themselves with uh, Hong Kong's core values, and um, so education is very important. So CS for A, I want to say that the government must no longer drag its feet. Ms. Ho, thank you, President. While we don't have too many uh, members in this uh, council, I will not call for a head count because I think it's more group discussion, it's more humane, and uh, it's actually um, and also befits uh, the topic of this motion debate. Uh, the administration simplifies uh, the matter into um, rising uh, welfare and medical expenditure with uh, an aging population, and therefore we must uh, absorb more young immigrants in order to make up for our dwindling workforce. This is the uh, simplified version of the government's population policy. I think we have missed the point using this approach. If we look at the original motion uh, by Mr. Yip 
taught him is about uh, the um, uh, stiff uh, uh, address the challenge of demographic changes to society. And looking at the amendments, we all uh, are all asking for training of manpower so that there can be a match, a proper match of talents and also uh, jobs at different uh, ranks and uh, trades. But this is not about policy. Po uh, Population policy, as uh, Dr. Kenneth Chen said, it is a population policy. Uh, should be people oriented. We should not regard the population as the cost of our production. We should consider uh, the experience of a person after birth, his needs, uh, 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 his uh, uh, the. Um, Probability that he will uh, get ill and uh, and to ensure that he is well looked after throughout his uh, life. So family policy is an important element of uh, population policy. Family policy is not just about um, replacement of um, population using uh, fertility rate. Well, if with so many uh, single kid families, now they are single child at home, they don't have siblings uh, to fight with them, to share, so they don't know how to accept failure. Uh, they don't know, they won't be good losers, they cannot accept frustration, they can easily become self centered. Will they be sufficiently, uh, have a sufficient sense of responsibility? Will they have the patience to uh, keep a marriage? Because this is a very a big challenge where they have sufficient a sense of responsibility to become a parent, and uh, when their parents grow old, one children, one adult child will have to uh, take care of two aged parents without any siblings to share the burden with them. So they are from families of single with only one child, and then come uh, sooner they won't have any relatives. They don't have uh, cousins or aunties and uncles. They don't even have to visit relatives uh, at Chinese New Year. And if uh, they do not have good communication with the parents who will hand down uh, experience, their experience in life to them. Now, uh, if uh, all the parents have died, have passed away, and they are left an elderly singleton, how can they uh, face death and elderly on their own? And how, who will remind them that uh, their physical ability and uh, mental agility will decline? So. They only left with welfare services from the government. How would they face uh, aging and also illness? Who will be there to provide emotional support for them? So population policy must include family uh, policies to uh, ensure that there is interdependence among family members. So that uh, starting from uh, very young in life, people uh, know to uh, be responsible for one another, and they uh, should have good relationship with one another, so that they can offer mutual support. We should not just encourage people to raise a family, because if a person is very self-centered and um, doesn't like company when he grows up, he don't want to become parents. Well, we have a group of. Uh, gays and lesbians uh, who have a different uh, sexual orientation and under the current legislation they cannot form families, they cannot be uh, legally married and they are also subject to discrimination by some sector of uh, society. So we cannot ignore the needs of this one-tenth of our population. We must legislate to ensure that um, homosexuals can get married legally, and heterosexual marriages uh, need support, and uh, hetero homosexuals also need family support. They want to uh, become uh, legal couples, and they want to have the blessings of uh, their friends and uh, relatives so that uh, they can uh, live together and support one another. And as for the transsexuals, well, they are really the minority of the minority in Hong Kong. Not long ago, the CFA 
uh, ruled that the administration must amend the legislation within a year to ensure that transsexuals can have the right to get married leg legally in our system. These are their rightful human rights that cannot be overlooked by the administration. As regards uh, social costs, I have uh, moved two amendments. First, universal retirement protection on an individual, a family, and or society basis. Uh, we should plan for this as early as possible. The uh, Labour Party has always asked the administration to allocate $50 billion for establishing a seed fund for universal retirement protection. They are after the hard-earned uh, savings or contributions of Hong Kong people uh, being kept by the government. We have uh, $2,500 billion in reserve. Why not take out $50 billion to establish a seed fund so that by the time uh, Professor Vincent Chow has completed his study by the end of this year. Nelson Chow, by the end of this year, we can have money to uh, set up uh, retirement protection for all. A reserve of $50 billion is certainly the responsibility of the government. We can't say that this is definite what we need because uh, statistics or data for setting up universal retirement protection is with the central policy unit. Uh, we believe the raw data have been handed over to Professor Nelson Chow, and perhaps the CS4A would like to clarify whether this is the case. In fact, other academics other than uh, Dr. Nelson Chow would also like to do the calculations for us. Uh, I hope that the CPU can make public the data so that um, scholars um, in the community can also work out a feasible scheme so that when Dr. Nelson, Professor Nelson Chow's proposal is announced, there can be a more comprehensive discussion. If we don't have uh, immigrants uh, to make up for our loss in our population, we will not see any growth. In uh, 2003, the population was 6.73 million, and this year is about 7.3 million. We have checked government statistics. If we take into account uh, family reunion, uh, those on um, single uh, permit, uh, 440,000. Type 2 babies, 170,000, and um, quality um, immigration scheme, 56,700, and uh, invest investment uh, immigration, uh, 2,000. So if we do not uh, allow immigrants to come in, the actual population will drop. I think a change in the government's policy in dealing with type 2 babies uh, will be able to uh, change our population, projected population from uh, 8.9 million to 8.3 million. But Hong Kong is such a small place, can we really accommodate 8.3 million people? Now, if uh, allow uh, immigrants uh, to um, to replenish our population, have we considered that in, uh, we will soon have a mix of immigrants from different cultures and uh, the implications to our culture? We uh, must. Uh, we should absorb. Immigrants that share common values of Hong Kong, we should not allow immigrants uh, that are only here to provide money for us. Well, why I don't have enough time to talk about my second amendment, I think it is straightforward enough. We should not just uh, think of uh, earning hot money. We should also ask these investment immigrants to provide job opportunities for Hong Kong people. Mr. Frankie Yick, Mr. President. All advanced countries attach importance to population policy. Population policy reflects the developmental blueprint of that country or that place. The, SAR, the SRG established task forces and committees to study population policy. It has um, introduced the uh, ASMTP and CIES. The Population Steering Committee last year published a progress report in 2012. It is a pity 
that the report is only addressing the uh, giving birth of mainland children in Hong Kong. This is not a far-sighted and scientific population policy report. The policy lacks long-term population. The, the report lacks long-term population policy or foresight. foresight, uh, foresight. The administration reorganized its population steering committee. It has incorporated um, different sectors of the community to study the change in demographic structure in Hong Kong in the next 30 years and the implication on Hong Kong. It will also make recommendations on various policies and measures. We don't know the timetable of that steering committee and we don't know when the recommendations can be implemented. Population aging, decline in productivity in labor, decline in labor force, lack of manpower policy, uh, lack of um, blue collars, lack of supply of blue collars, a mismatching in the uh, labor markets, mismatching in resources, and uh, are nothing new. The ACLG ten years ago knew that already, but the training policy. Uh, in term, in short term, medium term, and long term, um, were not adequate. We have wasted our time. We have lost our opportunities. The Liberal Party represents the uh, business sector, the SMEs, uh, the uh, middle income groups. We are concerned about shortage manpower. If the problem is not resolved, our development will be hampered. We will not have the momentum for continuous growth. Manpower training, manpower shortage are important factors which we have to deal with. According to information provided by the administration, at uh, the uh, senior secondary technical level and, the, and sub degree level, there will be a, a substantial shortage, and there will be a shortage of about 22,000. Where do they come from? We are worried. The construction industry and also the tra traffic and transport industry uh, do not have adequate manpower, and the uh, maintenance of uh, vehicles and aircraft are also short of manpower. We are famous for quality and uh, cost-effective service in maintenance of aircraft and many large airlines choose Hong Kong as a place of maintenance. There is a recruitment target 1,000 this year. Now some um, European and uh, North American airlines have chosen neighboring places for doing maintenance. We've lost uh, some of our uh, customers and that will affect our development in the uh, aviation industry. We need to um, have diversification in our education system. The administration should encourage um, the young people who have interest, who, uh, who have interest um, in vocational education uh, to uh, take up vocational educa uh, education and uh, service-oriented courses. This will bring new blood into different industries and support sustainable development. Uh, graduate students uh, will increase in number, but are there adequate graduate jobs to accommodate these university graduates? This is a question. Uh, there is mismatching of manpower. Degree holders are forced to take up jobs that require less education. That's a waste of resources. That's uh, therefore, it is necessary for the administration to review its manpower um, policy and how to match that with our um, industries. Say, for example, the maintenance, uh, maintenance of aircraft um, has a strong demand for manpower, but they cannot get enough uh, employees. The Liberal Party proposes that the administration should encourage the, sponsor, uh, the school sponsoring bodies to set up more senior secondary school uh, um, senior secondary schools so that students 
who have graduated from Form 3 can continue to take up vocational courses if they are not suitable for mainstream uh, grammar schools. They should be given, young people should be given the opportunities to learn different skills and prepare themselves for different professions. Let me now turn to improving the one way permit arrangement. Mr. Vincent Fang has um, um, Mr. Vincent Fang raised this issue last year. Among the 150 uh, quota per day, um, there are the so called overage children, and they made full use of the quota. In comparison with 2010, uh, at that time the usage was about 120 per day. These overage children uh, will, um, will continue to move into Hong Kong, but their number will decline. The SALG should start talking to the mainland and try to change the policy so that Hong Kong can have a say. The 150 places uh, among the 150 places, some should be earmarked to attract those um, who are eligible, who, who who are not fit for the ASMTP or the uh, QMAS, but who still have the skills and knowledge. Uh, they should be attracted to come to Hong Kong. That's the proposal of the Liberal Party. Thank you. The Honourable. Kenneth Leung. I have uh, proposed uh, some amendments to Mr. Ipkot Him's motion. I'd like to explain the rationale behind my amendment. We all agree that it is an urgent matter that we have a proper policy, population policy. Since uh, 2002, the government has really set up a string committee on population policy and uh, setting out the uh, main objective of our population policy is to ensure that we have sufficient population to uh, maintain and promote a knowledge based uh, economy. And then uh, in 2007, uh, the string committee on uh, population policy was set up. Looking back, the administration. has uh, two major problems when it comes to uh, the issue of publishing policy. First, uh, the policy issues involved are too narrow. For instance, in between uh, in 2010-2011, the policy address asked the steering committee on publishing policy to study mainly two issues. First, to provide uh, support for uh, retired elderly elderly persons have chosen to retire on the mainland. Second, to uh, look at the uh, social and uh, other implications of children born of mainland uh, women who have decided to come back to Hong Kong for education. There is no far forward looking and far sighted policies. For instance, in May 2010. Uh, mid, uh, 2012, uh, the String Committee on Policy Population uh, published its 2012 report. A number of pressing issues were mentioned. I want to say that they have just pointed out the problems with no solutions proposed. And uh, the report failed to review our current policy. So, my Amendment is asking the administration to provide specific objectives and measures and to set a time frame for formulating and implementing the publishing policy. According to the Census and Statistics Department, in 2011, the fertility rate was about 1.2 childbirth per woman of uh, the right age. Of course, that was the figure in 2011. It was really higher than the record load of 0.9 in 2003. But still, 1.2, a fertility of uh, rate of 1.2 
is still a far cry from the uh, well-recognized optimum fertility rate of 2.1, which is also called the replacement rate. Uh, well, our current fertility rate is still too low compared with that. Uh, we are not providing sufficient uh, financial incentives to boost fertility. I asked a similar question in the past year, and I think the cs for a also answered a similar question. Yes, it's personal choice whether couples want to uh, raise a family, but housing and education are even two bigger concerns. In the past decade or so, the uh, government uh, did not have any consistent policies on these two areas. So um, local residents are at a loss. To boost fertility rate, we need to provide uh, cash subsidies and tax concessions. And we must resolve uh, the housing and education issues. And this is a very critical point. President allowed me to uh, widen my discussion, the scope of my discussion a little bit more. Many colleagues have stressed that the current low fertility rate is a serious problem. An aging population has negative impact on our demography. However, I have an alternative view, and let me emphasize here, to address the uh, problem associated with our demographic change, we should not just uh, look at how we can uh, tackle uh, how uh, we, we should not just look at our aging population. Our aging population and a slow population growth are two different things. Now, to deal with uh, the problems associated with aging, we must have good, we must be prepared for the retirement of uh, those who are 40s, in their 40s. So, retirement protection should plan 20 or 25 years ahead to ensure that they have a secure retirement. The uh, fertility is rate is low, even if our population growth has slowed down or even if uh, the growth is zero, this may not necessarily bring negative impact. If our population growth has slowed down, if uh, the rate is lower than the growth of our GPD, then a smaller population will mean that our GPD must not drop. That means we all have to boost our productivity. Perhaps this is a good sign for us. Many sociologists have talked about this. We need uh, more living space. We need more choice. And uh, everyone should be allowed to enjoy more social resources. He is enjoying now. All right, immigration is another problem. We've got um, babies born of uh, parents that are non uh, Hong Kong residents. We've got 770 uh, babies born of this way. And we've got various immigration schemes, and about 10,000 or so mainlanders have become Hong Kong residents through these schemes. This means that we have lost the autonomy over. Uh, immigration in all countries and in all cities and uh, provinces on the mainland, they have a say over who can become citizens or residents of the place. They have a household system. Uh, because of one country, two systems, we must have some autonomy uh, over a proper policy Population policy. Well, uh, the professional comments in 2010 uh, proposed a scoring scheme for uh, skilled immigrants. 
so that we can bring in uh, immigrants of different background from the mainland. Uh, they can be uh, quality talents. Uh, they can uh, be uh, university graduates from the mainland, stay behind to work. We can uh, accord a, a point system to age, uh, education quality, uh, education qualifications, uh, experience, and so forth. Under the system, anyone who uh, wants to obtain a residency in Hong Kong can apply under the same scheme. And then we can align different uh, immigration policies in Hong Kong. We lack a long-term population policy. We have no say over who can become Hong Kong residents. As a result, it is hard for us to uh, vet and approve mainland uh, immigrants. It's also hard for us to have long-term uh, planning for uh, social resources and public infrastructure. And uh, this can also be a loophole and uh, that can fuel corruption and bribery. I hope that the administration can uh, set up a blueprint for our population policy as soon as possible so that uh, we can uh, be able to deal we'll be able to deal with the impact of population aging and establish policies on education manpower and economy it's just past 9 uh, p.m we will continue until the debate is done i believe we'll be able to adjourn before midnight mr tommy Zhang, president mr frankie yik has already explained very clearly that our existing population policies can't deal with the problems we face in Hong Kong, namely a shortage of manpower and professionals. In fact, um, large, medium and small uh, enterprises are suffering from a, a shortage of manpower. In fact, many in the catering sector have told me that they dare not invest any further in their business. Now, we don't know when um, our medium and long-term um, population policies um, uh, uh, will um, be um, uh, taking effect. And so I think um, uh, for certain sectors, we should allow importation of labor um, to prevent the situation from deteriorating. Now, it's true that we have the GEP, the uh, ASMTP, and the QMAS. These are um, schemes to bring in uh, quality people. But then over um, the past few years, only about 200,000 people were brought in under these schemes. And we really can't compare ourselves with Singapore. In 2012 alone, um, a, a quarter of um, uh, Singapore's population, or 1.2 million, uh, are imported um or, or imported people. Now, you know, like Hong Kong, Singapore doesn't have um, natural resources. It only has a harbor. But then um, Singapore, um, or rather uh, in, in Hong Kong, we um, used to have an advantage, and um, that was um, our quality people. But then Singapore knew um, uh, its uh, shortcoming. It uh, has been um, importing labor. And in fact, a white paper on importation of labor has been released by the government stating that um, in order to promote economic development, importation of labor is required. But then in Hong Kong, um, oh, oh, I don't think um, importation of labor has, on such a small scale, can help um, resolve the mismatch between um, demand and supply. Concerning the supplementary labor scheme, I understand the number of applications has been increasing. Um, in fact, um, in fact, the um, application number is five thousand nine hundred, and and um, the number is doubled. But then, um, for example, we only had 1,940 um, successful applications. In 2010, the success rate was 50.4%, but in 2012, only 32.8%. Last week, um, the Western um, uh, restaurant operators complained to me. They said that it was uh, um, a lot of the... Um, 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 entry visa applications were turned down, and so they believe that in two years' time, Hong Kong will be lagging behind Singapore by ten years at least. Now, in fact, um, 
No, no. And in fact, um, you know, um, different places have different cuisine. For example, paella or Spanish um, fried rice. We must have um, chefs from Spain um, to 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 cook this um, dish. But then um, the Hong Kong um, doesn't um, approve um, of. Um, Um, Spanish uh, chefs um, uh, to come, and then for the sous chefs and um, uh, pastry chefs again, um, applications to bring in these people are always rejected. Now, does the government understand that if you bring in three to four um, um, talents from abroad, you may be able to create twenty to thirty jobs for local people? In fact, um, Tang Guess has also told me that concerning the um, that the, 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 the pipes in Kai Tech. Um, uh, they have to be replaced, and a super uh, large um, barge um, came from the mainland, but there was no uh, welding uh, um, um, technician available. Uh, in fact, the town guest has told me that they in fact do not have enough workers to replace the pipes. And then in the construction sector, there is a shortage of workers, and also there is a shortage of architects, engineers, and as a result, um, building costs or construction costs keep rising, and the pace of construction works um, is slow. And then do you know that in the public sector, there is a shortage of doctors, about two hundred and ninety, and also um, in the private hospitals, there is a shortage of doctors as well. And so we have um, private hospitals uh, poaching the um, um, doctors from the public sector, and as a result, the waiting time for specialist um, service is very long. And then for low skill workers like um, 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 uh, uh, those um, for washing the dishes, it's difficult. To get these people, and in fact, um, we we have there's a similar problem in Shenzhen, and so even if Hong Kong is willing to bring in these people, we don't know whether these people will come in. But at least we should give it a try. I think, um, on the one hand, we need to, um, bring in um, uh, professional skilled workers. We need to uh, try to uh, help Hong Kong develop or transform into a knowledge based economy. We need to um. Create um, more work for our young people, and at the same time, because we have an aging population, Hong Kong should also um, um, try to bring in um, low skill workers. I think we should be open minded. There should be um, in depth and accurate assessments of the uh, demands in the different sectors. We, of course, need to strike the right balance. Then, uh, in bringing in um, um, talents and bringing in uh, workers would uh, make. Enable us to bake a bigger pie. Local people will benefit uh, as a result. These are my remarks. Thank you, Chief Secretary for Administration. President, uh, first I really welcome Ms. Mr. Hims' uh, motion debate on formulating a policy, population policy. Eight members have moved amendments uh, to the motion debate. Uh, to the motion, and uh, Mr. Tommy Chung has moved an amendment to one of the amendments. This goes to show that uh, population policy, in fact, cover a number of policy areas and objectives can also be different. Regardless of the position taken by members, I believe this motion is very timely because uh, I can take the opportunity to report to you on the work of uh, the string committee on. Uh, population policy, which I chair, I can also take the opportunity to hear your views on this subject, so that I can uh, be better prepared for the public consultation exercise, uh, which will be launched soon. Here, I'd like to share with members uh, the government's uh, basic uh, ideas when uh, approaching this problem. While we have not conducted uh, continuously studies on population policy, as mentioned by uh, 
Professor Kenneth Chen. Well, in 2003, uh, there was a report published uh, on publishing policy and the third government uh, published uh, another report last year. The uh, two reports devote a lot of passage to deal with pressing social issues. For instance, in 2003, the report uh, mainly dealt with uh, the welfare uh, pressure created by new arrivals. And then the report in 2012 uh, devoted a lot of passage to uh, the problem of type 2 babies. We may not be able to uh, have a comprehensive pol publishing policy as uh, mentioned in Mr. Ip's motion, uh, motion, original motion. So we'd like to tackle this problem seriously in our discussion uh, with uh, the community and to deal with uh, challenges associated with the issue. When uh, dealing with uh, major uh, policy issues, we'll first talk about our philosophy and rationale. And in his election platform, the CE had a very clear uh, rationale. He is of the view that we don't have natural resources. Our talents, our manpower resources is the only resource we have for sustainable development. And uh, the objective of our publishing policy is to keep enhancing the quality of life of Hong Kong people and uh, to boost productivity so that everyone can uh, contribute to development of the economy. And we must give priority consideration to the uh, potential and capability of local people. And we must also accept immigrants to make up for um, publishing gaps. And uh, we must uh, help Hong Kong to boost its competitiveness. We must uh, take care of the interests of Hong Kong people, and uh, we should also accept new immigrants. Well, this is not just about social and economic development. It's also about whether uh, different uh, ethnic groups can live in harmony in Hong Kong. Having heard uh, uh, the um, philosophy of the CE's uh, policy, you should have an idea that the um, 2012 or the policy would even uh, be more uh, would even be wide broader than the 2003 objective. Uh, population policy should take care of both uh, economic and social needs, and should cover non-economic objectives to promote uh, development in society, to enhance inclusiveness and integration, so that everyone can give full play to the potential and there can be quality uh, living for all in society. We should continue to uh, nurture our talents so that our publishing quality can uh, dovetail our economic development. I'm pleased to hear from uh, Mr. Pohim, who is the mover of the motion, and uh, also other members view. It appears that they are all for this policy. In the public consultation exercise that will be launched soon, we will invite the public to comment on our proposals. We must have uh, active involvement of the community in population, uh, in policy formulation. Uh, we can engage the public a lot uh, from growth uh, to from birth to growth, uh, to uh, uh, raising family, uh, to growing old, well, everyone is involved. People of different age brackets and background may have a view on this. However, the issues involved are both uh, broad and deep, so past discussions might not help us to uh, build a consensus. So in the coming public consultation exercise, we must uh, prepare properly so that we can lead the community in this discussion on issues of importance so that um, the community can understand the pros and cons of different policies before uh, we uh, pick the preferred policies. We should not and will not just uh, remain at the um, uh, theoretical uh, level. We will uh, really discuss what specific measures will be effective and who will uh, pay for implementation of these policies. Our target is to turn our discussion into a practicable action plan. So today's motion debate is very constructive because the original motion and amendments have uh, various measures that are all embracing from planning of public service 
surfaces uh, to remove the obstacles for child uh, birth and uh, also education other things they are also they're all covered in the amendments we must uh, let the public understand the urgency and seriousness of the matter Please uh, bear with me. Let me repeat once again that our population would age rapidly. We expect that by 2041, uh, one out of every three Hong Kong people will be over 65 years old, and the greatest impact will be a shrinking workforce. It's expected that in five years' time, i.e. 2018, our workforce will begin to shrink. Therefore, this will slow down our economic growth. Uh, the original motion says that our demographic change will pose a severe challenge to Hong Kong's sustainable development. Our salary tax base will continue to uh, be to, to uh, become uh, narrower, and uh, there will be greater demand for welfare, medical, and health care services, and this will generate pressure on our uh, public finances. Maintaining a status quo is not a choice. This term of government attaches a lot of significance to population policy, and therefore, in our December last year, we reorganized our steering committee, introducing experts and academics and people from different sectors of the community. I myself chair the steering uh, committee with uh, heads of bureaus and departments as members. It is a high level, uh, cross disciplinary uh, structure. And uh, in the light of demographic changes, uh, we review our policies from time to time to propose enhancements. So far, we have met four times. We plan to uh, start our public engagement exercise later this year. On one hand, we will explain the uh, urgency of the matter to the community and how they uh, how the issue uh, is related to them, and then we will we'll, uh, stimulate a debate in the community, hoping that we can have a community consensus. Understand that this is not an easy target. However, we hope that through the uh, public engagement exercise, we can let the public understand the challenges and opportunities uh, we're faced with, and then uh, we can tackle each and every aspect positively. The steering committee and uh, secretariat are now uh, planning for the public consultation and uh, the necessary documents. I look forward to valuable comments from members so that we can enrich uh, the uh, consultation paper which is being drafted. I'll respond to uh, views expressed by members later, in particular, the point about uh, type 2 babies. Thank you. What did you take? Mr. Chen Hakan. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Ibko Kim's motion is timely. Hong Kong only has a report on population policy, but there is no comprehensive population policy. The administration has admitted that there is no population planning in Hong Kong. Population is allowed to develop freely, and it has caused a lot of problems, including uh, mainland children born in Hong Kong, cross-border students. This is the result of uh, because of lack of population policy, and they couldn't care less attitude of the government. People of Hong Kong have to bear the consequences. Mr. President, I'm studying a book on the history of Hong Kong. We look back into the history of Hong Kong when our population policy has a mistake uh, there is a serious uh, th there are many social problems mr president you are learned you are well read uh, in the uh, late qing dynasty hong kong had a, a conflict uh, between local people and the hakas uh, the two groups of people to compete for resources uh, engage in a f serious fight and cause a lot of deaths. There was no planning by the government. Local people fought with the Hakas, and a lot. Uh, there was a serious rift in society, and that rift could not be bridged within a long uh, period of time. I uh, re. Iterated the um, fight between the Hakas and the locals uh, to highlight the um, conflict between local people and new immigrants. The problem doesn't occur for the first time. I want to tell the administration that if uh, there is no population policy, then uh, one 
will be uh, one is bound, one is calling for trouble. There cannot be natural integration. The government must have a uh, policy to uh, resolve in term, uh, to to solve conflicts between local people and new immigrants. Now, uh, those who are staying in Guangdong. The number of um, mainland children born in Hong Kong reached 150,000 by 2017, 190,000, which is equivalent to the population of Taiwan. Although not all of them will live in Hong Kong, but they are like all Hong Kong people. They are eligible to receive public service in Hong Kong in the area of education or health care and other areas. The administration says that it is difficult to forecast how many these um, mainland children who are born who were born in Hong Kong, uh, um, and how they, uh, and when will they come to Hong Kong for good? Uh, but um, nothing is perfect in this world. The government has to plan with um, to, uh, and deal with uncertainty. Say, for example, there are main, many uh, mainland children who were born in Hong Kong uh, who have chosen to live in the mainland because they need the care of their parents. But after they've grown up, they may move into Hong Kong because they don't need any more parental care. Uh, by that time, we have good medical care, so when they are ill, they can come to Hong Kong to receive medical treatment. Our Focus shouldn't just be limited to baby formula or diapers or uh, school places. These are just the prelude. The more far-reaching consequence is that our public service may need to accommodate a population as big as that in Taiwan. We have to make sure that we have adequate resources. We have to make sure the resources are uh, effectively used and fairly distributed in order to avoid serious social conflicts. We should learn the lessons of history. If government officials don't understand the conflict between the Hakkas and the locals, they should read uh, this book. I believe this book will be helpful. And Mr. President, I'm most concerned about the problems that cannot be resolved even during the prelude. The inadequate school places in the North District is a problem which I have already spotted and the DAB colleagues have already spotted. But the administration adopted a nonchalant attitude and uh, it only uh, is dealing with symptoms of uh, this so-called return mechanism. And it is not helpful in solving the problem. Um, when the mainland children born in Hong Kong have grown up, there will be a more a greater demand for school places. There will be shortage of school premises. There will be a shortage of teachers. Uh, the DAB District Council has asked the administration to build more school premises, uh, set up uh, schools for uh, Hong Kong children, for, for mainland children born in Hong Kong to study in Shenzhen instead of coming over the border. Now the problem of cross-border students is imminent. If the administration doesn't take any action, there will be further conflicts, and the conflict will be escalated, and it will be too late by then. I support Ms. Ip Kim's motion. I urge the administration to publish a comprehensive population policy to allay the worries of the people. Uh, Ms. Ellis Mack, Mr. President, I speak from my personal experience. This year is the 20th anniversary of my university graduation. And I am uh, conducting uh, some uh, statistical studies on the alumni. There are many uh, female students. Um, when I graduated, there were 83 girls and five boys. And I was update. I am, have been updating the information of the alumni, and I 
um, responsible for one quarter of the class. I phoned up 21 um, ex um, classmates, and among 21, only nine uh, are married. And among the nine married, uh, they are fortunate, they have children. They all have children. But only two families have more than one child, and seven have only one child. One th uh, more than uh, half, or rather less than half, have got married, and only uh, two out of nine have m more than one uh, child. According to the CNS Department in 2012, the gender ratio is 1,000 uh, men to 876 women. And as for working women uh, more than 40 years old, um, more than 140,000, an increase, um, um, this is a big number. Now they may say that uh, these women are choosy if they just lower their demand then uh, they will get a partner. Is it because um, my um, schoolmates uh, are too demanding? The working, the working women have long working hours. We don't have standard working hours. And without standard working hours, we have to work overtime without overtime pay. The FTU has conducted a survey on the working hours of women. More than half of the respondents had to work um, overtime uh, more than, uh, for about two to three days out of five day week, and 62 percent of the respondents said that working hours were too long so that they had no time to uh, go out for a date. Uh, just giving um, allowances will not be adequate. If we do not deal with the fundamental issues, how can we encourage um, a high fertility rate, a higher fertility rate? Now, under the Sustainable Development Council, um, there was a working group on population policy. I was a member of that working group, and I made this uh, point. Now, you wanted to encourage a uh, higher fertility rate. You just talked about increasing children allowance, a child allowance. But what about the long working hours for women? They don't have time to go out for a date. Same for men. They don't have a chance to uh, date the girls. So they, they don't even have a chance to date the girls. How can they um, got, uh, get married? That's fundamental. As for those who have got married, the majority of them have only one child. Why they don't want to have one more child? My schoolmates told me that um, they have long working hours. Now they still have to care for, uh, and after work they care for their child. Uh, we study English, we watch uh, films, uh, French films. We uh, we have we like coffee. We belong to the middle class. Um, after work, uh, they still have to do housework and household chores, and they have to care for the child as well. So it is a heavy responsibility just to raise a single child. Now, in the steering committee, it said that uh, there is a need to provide a family a fan friendly working environment. Now, uh, female workers suffer wage deduction because the um, maternity leave is not fully paid. Now, if you want to have a child, you need to pay for that. You will not be given full pay in your maternity leave. If it is family friendly, if it is about encouraging fertility, then why should we discriminate against women who are willing to give birth, who have to care for their children, and who have to suffer discrimination for that? 
With one more family member, there will be more expenses. Um, there is no support in giving birth, and uh, there is a pay loss of at least one fifth. There is a heavier financial burden. No wonder the ratio of maternity oppose uh, maternity depression is getting uh, more and more common. Now the issues are interrelated. We cannot uh, look at it in an isolated manner. The working conditions. The working environments um, have far-reaching implications. I hope the steering committee under the CSOA will not just try to encourage fertility, but to uh, consider giving good working conditions, so family-friendly conditions, so that the singles can get married and also the um, women and can have full pay maternity leave. Issues should not be isolated. Thank you. Mr. Lowai Kwok, Mr. President, um, the SAR government has not formulated a coherent population policy. And as a result, it's very difficult for the government to carry out long-term planning. Now, I want to say that, in fact, the government knows what problems there are, and I understand that um, some action has been taken. In t July 2012, um, the CSC the um, published a paper on manpower pro uh, on population projections, and then in November, the steering committee on population was revamped to include um, academics and uh, others um, to um, look at demographic changes in the coming years and the uh, implications on Hong Kong society. Now we understand that. Um, uh, population changes will affect um, uh, whether Hong um, uh, uh, Hong Kong can um, have sustainable development. Now, President, many are worried that um, demographic changes uh, will pose great challenges to the sustain sustainability of Hong Kong's development. Now, in fact, we can um, foresee three trends. First population growth will gradually slow down from 7.1 million in 2012 to 8.47 million in 2041. And the annual average growth rate um, will only be 0.6%. Although there will still be population growth, um, in the past two decades, the uh, birth rate um, uh, was consistently low. And the um, post, um, those born in the post-war baby boom um, will gr um, gradually retire. And the pop uh, working population will drop to about 3.3 .3 million in 2041. Second, um, elderly persons aged 65 or above will increase very substantially from 980,000 last year to 2.56 million in 2041. Um, our public finances will face great challenges. Um, at the moment, only 1.5 million people who are working need to pay salaries tax. But then, um, with a dwindling um, working population and with an aging population, the dependency ratio. will drop from 5 to 1 to 2 to 1, um, the 5 meaning those from 15 to 64 years old. But of course, um, challenges can also bring opportunities. The government should uh, embrace all the challenges and um, plan well ahead in order to reduce the negative impact and uh, promote new development opportunities. For example, because of the three trends I've mentioned, government must um, take um, action in a timely manner. First of all, um, the um, um, uh, men 
government supplement Hong Kong sub manpower, both in terms of quality and quantity. Hong Kong has succeeded because of um, its people. And so if there is inadequate labor supply, then the development of different sectors and industries will be constrained. Now, in terms of quantity, uh, there should be flexible retirement arrangements and uh, family-friendly policies to attract more elderly persons and women to join the labor market. And then those um, Hong Kong people who have emigrated and their children should be attracted to come back to Hong Kong. And then the various um, um, talent importation schemes should be um, optimized and enhanced. And then in terms of quality, Manpower training and vocational training should be stepped up so as to uh, resolve mismatch with regard to um, um, demand and supply of manpower. And also the um, um, silver hair um, um, uh, market should be developed. Elderly persons can be uh, um, a momentum for growth. So on the one hand, uh, retired elderly persons should be encouraged to serve um, society in um, a new capacity. And then uh, elderly persons can also um, 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 support a very big market, for example, health care, leisure activities. And then thirdly, there must be sound planning with regard to our public finances. We have to make sure that our social services can uh, will continue to be of good quality. And then concerning social security, welfare policies, education policies, um, demographic changes will um, uh, have implications for these various policies and expenditure items. Now, a government will... Um, um, suffer from a reduction in revenue from salaries tax. Can government try to open up new sources of tax income? And so we, uh, there must be, um, government has come up with um, appropriate public fiscal policies. President, I want to say that all these um, issues are interrelated. Um, we, we need to pull together the wisdom of um, different sectors in society. Government should set up a dedicated executive mechanism um, to implement short-term, medium-term, and long-term population policies. And there should be a comprehensive planning with regard to the demand for various types of services. The um, effectiveness of different policies should be reviewed from time to time. Adjustments should be made in a timely manner to help Hong Kong cope with challenges and embrace opportunities brought about by an aging population. This is important if we want our community to grow continuously. Thank you. Mr. Tenka Pew. Yes, thank you. President, um, uh, one member uh, moved um, a, an amendment on um, importing labor on all fronts. Now, yes, we know that um, uh, our population uh, uh, is aging, uh, there will be problems. And then uh, at the same time, some members say that um, there are people in Hong Kong who do not want to take up the, uh, certain jobs. All right. So what is the situation uh, um, in the labor market, good or bad? Um, the unemployment rate is only about 3.5%. So is it that we should um, import um, unskilled workers, junior workers? Last Thursday, the CNS department published um, uh, report number 52 on, uh, thematic, on the thematic household survey. And that report has to deal with... Um, um, uh, re uh, retirement. Now, so um, you may think that many Hong Kong people may want to retire um, in the mainland or outside Hong Kong, but according to the report, 4.2% uh, um, of our retirees say they will or most probably will retire outside Hong Kong, and for um, future retirees, about 8%. So in other words, a 
over 90% of the present employees will want to stay in Hong Kong upon retirement. So um, some people say that an aging population will affect the vitality of Hong Kong's economy. We really have to cope with this problem. And concerning this thematic um, report, uh, employees um, age 35 um, are interviewed. And um, they are asked um, whether they would like to continue to work um, uh, upon retire uh, when they reach retirement age, twenty five percent say they want to work part time. Eleven percent say they will they will continue to work full time, and then twenty four percent say they don't know. And thirty eight point seven percent say that they will retire. So, um. There are some who who um, really say that they will have to continue to work, and then uh, we they they are asked why they uh, will want to continue to work uh, when they reach retirement age, and sixty percent say that's because um, they need to continue to earn a living. So you can see that many employees still think that um, their future is insecure. They may need to continue to work beyond their retirement age. So. Is it really appropriate to talk about importation of labor? Uh, CS for A. I hope that you and your colleagues will uh, study this report very carefully. Today we are talking about challenges brought about by an aging population. I understand that the CS for A will um, respond um, to the point about one-way permits, and I think you should also talk about long-term care and also. Um, 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 and also retirement. Now uh, we we have um about um, nine hundred thousand um elderly persons, and we understand that about five point four billion dollars are now used um for um care and attention, and about twenty six billion for um to take care of the elderly. But at the moment, we don't have universal retirement protection. Every year, we have 5,000 elderly persons who die while they are waiting for care and attention uh, home places. So in 2039, uh, there will be 2.5 million elderly persons. So well, what is the situation going to be like? I, I think um, the community is... Um, courageous enough to face up to these problems. What we are worried about is that the government is unwilling to show the public the full picture. Now, I understand that your colleagues, those in the Labour Welfare Bureau, um, keep saying that we'll try to uh, provide more uh, places, we'll try to provide service vouchers, but then they are unable to tell us whether they will be able to satisfy the demand um, 10 years down the road. Um, what, what will be the discrepancy between demand and supply? It seems that they are unwilling to do such projections. But then last Thursday, concerning that the report of the thematic survey, um, it is said that over 90% of the employees in Hong Kong plan to retire in Hong Kong. So you have to come up with projections with regard to long-term care services. You have to project the level of services required. All right, so after you've um, done the projections, then you have to see where the resources should come from. You have to engage society in a discussion. But you are irresponsible if you do not um, do the projections. At the moment, 240,000 elderly persons have undergone um, um, your um, centralized assessment. Um, so, can you uh, try to do more analysis um, uh, based on the information in your database? And then, retirement protection. This is very important. $26 billion is um, now being um, uh, used to provide social security for elderly persons, but still elderly persons are grieved. There is this problem of um, poverty among elderly persons, and employees feel very insecure about their future and about their retirement life. In fact, the CPU last year 
gave a reply to um, the subcommittee on retirement protection led by Mr. Chen Kuo Chu, and it is said. That in February 2012, there was a survey on retirement conducted among 10,000 households, and in fact, um, our report should have been available at the end of last year. Um, so many months have left since this survey. So when will we be able to see the report? Um, thank you, Mr. Chen Kok Chu. Mr. President, the Steering Committee on Population Policy is a view that Hong Kong has a problem of population aging, and the government should adopt a more progressive policy. The government should encourage marriage and uh, giving birth to children. In September, there will be a consultation paper. In the year 2012, the administration set up a task force on population policy. Uh, it was tasked to study the implication of population structure on Hong Kong in the next 30 years. Uh, they, in 2003, the, uh, the uh, task force analyzed the population structure and trends. It was concerned about a low fertility rate, aging population, one-way permit scheme, the implication uh, of uh, population aging on economy integration, social integration. And then after five years, there was no progress. In 2007, the administration set up a steering committee on population policy. It said that it uh, would formulate policies and measures to achieve population targets. In 2002, uh, starting from 2002, 11 years have elapsed. There is still no comprehensive population policy. The piecemeal measures can do nothing. Uh, last year, there was a new team, a steering committee on population policy. The new steering committee uh, no longer mentioned the uh, quality immigration migrant scheme. It has changed stance. It encouraged uh, giving birth. It encouraged fertility. But I'm not uh, happy. Uh, I'm not optimistic. The uh, chairman of the committee is uh, Mrs. Lam, who is a fighter, and I uh, look forward uh, to her uh, doing, uh, putting up a good show. In Japan, in the 1970s, fertility, fertility rates started to decline. The impact on the economy only appeared in the 1990s. Some academics pointed out that other developed countries which experienced low fertility in the 1970s experienced negative uh, growth in labor force in uh, the year 2000. And afterwards, uh, there were economic crises. Hong Kong had the lowest fertility rate in the world, but the low fertility rate appeared later than other advanced countries labor force would continue will continue to increase the economy will not face a serious crisis in the near future but the future is not optimistic in the long term we know that lagging effect aging population is a long standing problem by 2031 a quarter of the population will be more than 65 years old the administration is just uh, looking after the interests of the big consortia. The administration puts a cap on welfare expenses, puts a cap on welfare expenses on the elderly. It refuses to have a long-term uh, retirement um, scheme, and there is no uh, welfare policy for the elderly. I hope that in the publishing the consultation paper, these elements will be included. Encouraging fertility uh, is one thing. Now, um, Donald Jung encouraged each family to have three children, but he has now become a laughing stock. Long working hours, bad education system, and um, um, crowded living environments are some of the factors deterring the giving, uh, the deterring. Uh, they um, having children, deterring families from having children. Tax allowance is not adequate. Thirty years ago, Singapore started 
the um, measures to encourage fertility. It invested about ten billion uh, dollars per year. But these measures are not effective. Their fertility rate is even lower than that of Hong Kong. The sense of security basically comes from having a home and having a secure job. The government should solve the housing problem and the job problem first. A um, an institution has pointed out that the administration has been at fault in making its population projections. Uh, usually, it is an overestimate. The um, po land policy basing on such um, projections um, is also wide off the mark, and it has become excuses for land reclamation. In 1998, there were, it was estimated that our population will reach 8.4 million in 2011, but the out the the out the, the outturn was 7.1 million in 2011. Um, it was a low as uh, it was an overestimation by 20 percent. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. Charles Mock. Mr. President, I thank Mr. Yip Kok Him for moving a motion on population policy. Hong Kong is densely populated. Hong Kong is an uh, external-oriented economy. Population projection is very important. Population policy is important. We have no say. The one-way permit system is controlled by the mainland. Every year, 47,000 people move to Hong Kong. Uh, since reunification, over 760,000 have moved into Hong Kong. We need to consider our, uh, our manpower demand in the future. The government has thrown uh, its hands into the air. Uh, we, the government doesn't consider our capacity. Um, One-way permit system is in the hands of the mainland. More and more mainlanders are coming to Hong Kong, and people are frustrated. We need to consider our capability. We all agree that we should get back the power of approving one-way permit holders. That is a basic requirement. We have no say on immigration. That's really scary. I've asked the um, CES for a as to whether we will pursue the course with the CPG and get back the power to approve the one-way permit um, system. Uh, the reply was that the administration would not do that because it was against the basic law. Now, Section 22, or Article 22 of the basic law um, says that um, for entry into Hong Kong, as they are, people from other parts of China must apply for approval. Among them, the number of persons who enter the region for the purpose of settlement shall be determined by the competent authorities of the CPG after consulting the government of the region. Have we been consulted? Have, uh, has the administration consulted the people of Hong Kong? With more new immigrants, there will be greater pressure on our education system, on our health care services, on our welfare services. Aren't these problems important? Should we be so uh, passive and just accept as many uh, people as they send us and let our land problem, let our health care problem, let our education problem continue? We need to assess the change, demographic change in demographic structure, and the implications on healthcare, welfare, and other policies. The one-way permit system is uncertain and unclear. Hong Kong should get back the power to approve one-way permits. We should review the quota system. It should be a family reunion scheme. It should be a scheme that is transparent. It should be a scheme to make good use, uh, to, to, um, that should be make good use of and meet the needs of Hong Kong. 
Apart from one-way permit holders, in 2012, more than 100,000 people moving into Hong Kong, about 40,000 under the one-way permit. What about the remaining? Are, they, um, uh, are there people remaining and working in Hong Kong? Have they formed families? There is no integrated immigration figures. How many uh, immigrants are mainlanders? How many immigrants are foreigners? How many stay here permanently? How many have left Hong Kong? They have no data. How can we have a population policy in this case? The central government allows 4,000 odd um, mainland enterprises uh, to have uh, their um, Officers remaining in Hong Kong, and they remain. If they remain in Hong Kong, they can they can become permanent residents, and their children can become permanent residents. How many of these of officers have, of the mainland enterprises have become permanent residents? Would that be a black hole for black hole for our of our mainland policy? We need professionals. We need talents, and we the professional commons has um, proposed a ch change in the mechanism, and Mr. Um, Kenneth Leung has proposed a point system. Now, if we are concerned about um, the lack of labor supply, then we should get back the power of approving the one-way permit holders. And uh, according to the steering committee in 2011. Among the one-way permit holders who come who came to Hong Kong, only 11 percent had university education. Most of the new immigrants um, didn't have uh, high education or good skills. As for uh, immigrant, uh, as for countries that attract immigrants, uh, such as Canada or New Zealand uh, or Australia. They have a point system uh, to so as to uh, attract people that can assist their economic development. I think we should have a suitable system to import talents and high quality professionals, and the score system should uh, enable us to get uh, young people of high skills and high productivity who are professionals and uh, those who. Uh, receive education in Hong Kong, who receive higher education in Hong Kong, should be given priority to uh, settle in Hong Kong. They are they are usually young people. They are young couples, and that they will help to balance our demographic structure. All in all, population policy is not just limited to labor force or economic development. It is a, um, not just about livelihood. Uh, the uh, policy should not be some way to a way to change our core value. Uh, on one hand, you say Hong Kong, our home. On the other hand, you open our doors and betray the people of Hong Kong. Thank you. I thought, Mr. Chen Kin Po. Thank you, President. Since the reunification, um, we have um, seen many problems in Hong Kong. For example, the employment problem, the poverty problem. Many people feel very um, worried and depressed. And in fact, there are deep-rooted causes for um, um, such conflicts. Uh, for conflicts in society, it is because of the absence of a population policy, and without such a policy, it's difficult for the government to develop long-term policies. And um, and and it's then if conflicts arise, they can't be resolved. In fact, they become more and more serious. In fact, I have always said that we need a population policy. We have need to look at um, the uh, number of people Hong Kong can cope with. We have to formulate. Employment, housing, and education policies, and long-term plans. But then, since the reunification, our government um, has been short-sighted. Maybe doesn't have that political power and energy to deal with this um, um, this long-term issue. Now, I will um, talk about 
some uh, population issues that we must um, look at urgently. Now, first of all, the one-way permit system. Over 760,000 mainlanders have come to Hong Kong on OWPs. Um, um, half of them um, are housewives, and uh, many of them um, have not um, um, received um, too much education. They, they've they come mainly for family reunion, and of course we can't deprive them of their rights. And so uh, we can only try to uh, help these new arrivals integrate into society. We try to give them the support that they need. And then another source of population growth is um, um, natural increase uh, or uh, births. In 2001, 48,000 babies were born last year. The number exceeded 90,000, so we've seen an increase. And over the last decade, um, 820,000 babies were born in Hong Kong, and about 200,000 were from um, uh, doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women. I think what is important is that the government should encourage uh, Hong Kong people to um, have children so as to supplement uh, Hong Kong's um, labor force. But then, of course, um, incentives have to be offered um, to people. For example, increasing the tax allowances for children and also um, subsidies for um, parents of babies. And also, there, there should be adequate daycare services for children or enterprises. Uh, should be encouraged to provide uh, more part-time jobs for mothers. There should be flexi working hours so that mothers can um, work and at the same time take care of their children. And there should also be um, tax um, um, allowances or concessions for uh, women um, who who um, uh, are willing to uh, give birth to babies and, and then stay at home to um, be uh, full-time um, mothers. We understand that the elderly population will um, account for 30% of our population in um, um, a few decades' time. And then uh, we'll also um, reach um, uh, the peak of uh, um, uh, deaths. Uh, after 30 years, we need to um, replace um, 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 the, the the population, and also I want to say that the two hundred thousand um, uh, children born of doubly non permanent resident pregnant women can be a time bomb for Hong Kong. Most of them are still in the mainland, and I've suggested that uh, the government should try to um, track their whereabouts and um, and have to uh, have an idea as to when they will come to Hong Kong to study. If they all come when they are in their teens and come to uh, receive secondary education or tertiary education, then they, it will be very difficult for them to, to be integrated into society and Hong Kong will be able to cope. So I think um, uh, there should be policy or economic incentives to attract um, these um, children to come to Hong Kong to settle at an early age so that, um, and um, and um, as these um, uh, and I'm mainly talking about families uh, who have the means and they uh, they will um, be able to also to promote uh, Hong Kong's economic development and then there will be a lot of um, Elderly persons who belong to the middle class who um, um, have the means um, upon retirement, but then they um, may suffer from uh, ill health because they they have nothing to do, um, um, and I think they should be um, gainfully engaged. This they have um, um, energy. They they um, are educated, and they should be asked to, uh, for example, uh, do volunteer work, for example, providing tutorial um, classes for um, underprivileged children, and so on and so forth. Mr. Vincent Fang, Mr. President, when children um, go to primary school, 
um, their parents um, um, naturally feel happy. But then this year we saw chaos with regard to P1 um, school place uh, allocation in the North District. So, uh, uh, it was said that there weren't enough um, um, places uh, in the district, and then there was the uh, return mechanism, so to speak, and as a result, um, an abandoned hostel. Um, had to be uh, renovated uh, very hastily um, in order to accommodate um, um, these uh, school children. And then in the last term, uh, there were a lot of mainland pregnant women coming to Hong Kong um, to give birth to children. All the uh, private hospitals were packed, and as a result, government hastily um, put forward a few sites for the development of private hospitals, but then when the new CE assumed office, um, he um, uh, stopped the um, trend, and as a result, um, uh, there was um, no one interested in the uh, ho private hospital sites. And then, as um, there aren't enough um, public housing units, people are saying that the um, Typo private hospital site should be used to build um, public housing estates, and therefore private hospitals they are um, increasing their charges because there is just some drastic drop in uh, the number of mainland pregnant women coming to Hong Kong to give birth to children, uh, babies, and then. Um, uh, um, uh, what's going to happen in a few years' time? Um, will we have to uh, close uh, many schools again uh, after a few years? So, um, so how can our principals and teachers um, feel secure about their prospects? Now, all these have happened because there is a lack of a comprehensive and coherent population policy. Without such a policy, how can the government uh, work out a blueprint for Hong Kong's future development, and how can the government um, deploy and make use of um, our resources uh, suitably and effectively? How can Hong Kong face challenges um, from uh, different parts of the world? Our competitiveness is diminishing. That's why Mr. Pok Him is again asking the government to formulate a population policy. I support his um, motion. I think um, in the preamble, um, um, in his motion, he has pointed out the problems that we face. Um, an aging population, low fertility rate, and um, in fact, we have um, depended on manpower resources for our success. But then in Hong Kong, we now face a shortage of manpower resources. Last year, I said that um, Hong Kong must have a population policy. I said that um, the Hong Kong government should make reference to um, the practices in other developed um, places. There should be um, importation um, of labor uh, on a limited basis, but then the proposal uh, was not um, uh, passed because of objection from uh, the DAB, the DP, and so on, and FTU, and so on and so forth. But then today, I want to say that I support this, uh, the DAB's um, proposal. You know, in Hong Kong, we're suffering from um, a shortage of manpower resources. And also, uh, the government um, is not far-sighted enough. Um, there aren't any medium and long-term policies to promote sustainable social and economic development. And I think all these can be attributed to a lack of um, a population policy. With an aging population, uh, we will have more and more elderly persons who need care and attention. But then we don't even have adequate men power resources um, in our uh, labor market. How, how can we have manpower resources to take care of our elderly persons? We keep talking about taking care of the elderly. This is uh, this is not it's not enough to get, uh, allow them to travel on public transport after paying two dollars or, or giving them an enhanced OAA. We must have people accompanying them. When they travel on public transport, we should have some we should have people um, uh, uh, doing shopping for them. And with a population policy, then that would mean 
that um, the Hong Kong SA our government has the say in bringing in a uh, labor, and if um, uh, there is a very serious unemployment problem in a particular sector, um, the government can act in a timely manner, and if the situation improves, the government can uh, immediately stop the importation of labor, and um, a population policy. Can enable the government to have um, um, control over the pace of population growth, the quality of the population. And as a result, the government can plan ahead. For example, um, how many um, private sector flats we needed, how many schools we needed, how many teachers need to be trained, how many public housing units need to be built, how many hospitals have to be built. Um, how many um, or what industries should be developed, and what um, the uh, CSSA um, a lot, a rate should be? The government will then be able to um, um, draw out a blueprint for Hong Kong's development in the next two to three decades. But without a population policy, how can the government come up with um, the directions for Hong Kong's development? Mr. Martin Liu, President. Population policy is the basis of the administration. It involves uh, the formulation of policies for various uh, aspects. Uh, our aging population uh, started more than a decade ago. Unfortunately, we have yet to have a proper policy on this. According to the Census and Statistics Department, for those who are aged 65 or above, uh, the uh, number will rise from 0 0.98 million to 2.5 million in 2041. That is one out of three persons in Hong Kong will be an elderly person. And the, uh, the, um, workforce will start to shrink in 2018 from uh, 3.5 million to uh, 3.2 million in 2031. That means uh, that will be, uh, uh, labor tightness in all sectors, and uh, the whole community will have uh, to foot the bill. And uh, population policy is about housing, education, medical and health care, man manpower, uh, planning, and uh, everything. Issues related to our population cannot be changed overnight. We need a forward-looking policy to tackle this, because the government has uh, ignored for too long this issue. In the short term, we can only address this problem by enhancing productivity and also quality of our manpower. Because of time limit, I will just uh, focus on a more pressing issue, and that is importation of manpower. We have uh, the uh, quality uh, migrant scheme, uh, the um, importation of talent schemes, and also uh, uh, non-local uh, university graduates staying behind to work in Hong Kong. They've been implemented for many years, and uh, they haven't been too satisfactory in helping us to attract talents. i take the QTS example. It was launched in 2006 as at later last year. 8,500 odd applications were received. 2,500 applications were approved and allowed to work in Hong Kong. About 77% of them were mainlanders. Those from the U.S. and Australia accounted for less than 7% in total. In other words, in average, only about 400 persons uh, were approved every year. Uh, this is still a far cry from the quota of 1,000 per year. The overall success rate is assessed at 30%. Last year, it even dropped to 16%. Only about 300 uh, talents were allowed to move to Hong Kong. Most of our talents are in the IT and uh, I mean financial services and accounting sector to be followed by IT and a computer, about 90%. Our business and trade, 15 percent. It's worth to note that over 20 percent of the talents uh, withdrew from the scheme after they were allowed to come to Hong Kong. It shows that we haven't got sufficient incentives and measures to retain them. 
Although the schemes are not attractive, doesn't mean that the government should be indiscriminating in vetting applications. However, the government uh, should be more proactive. First of all, we must uh, map out the long-term blueprint for our development. The government cannot afford to uh, waver in its stance. Of course, it's always difficult to get started. However, this is a necessary step. We should not just consider Hong Kong. We should consider the uh, possible changes in the long, medium, and short term in the international scene. This is something for the CPU to do. Well, uh, as, uh, with the exception of the early days of Mr. Sikstone's uh, uh, administration, uh, the CPU has not done a lot in this regard. The CPU should uh, research into the most needed talents in the coming uh, few years before we have forward-looking and targeted population policy. Last but not least, we have to ensure that the policy uh, is properly implemented by the relevant departments and bureaus. The fight for uh, talents is highly competitive. Many um, uh, advanced economies are scrambling for talents. Uh, Obama, the Obama administration uh, recently has changed its uh, immigration scheme for uh, skilled workers and change it to something like the Canadian uh, scheme. Singapore is just like a head hunter. It has got a dedicated project manager to uh, to source for uh, talents all over the world, and they even have a point-to-point -point network uh, for attracting talents, and they provide housing and uh, tax concessions to keep them. Although we would like to develop new industries in Hong Kong, but uh, in attracting talents uh, for uh, innovative and creative industries and uh, science and technology, I think we've missed uh, too many golden opportunities. We've been too passive. The government must be more aggressive in attracting talents from all over the world, and we must have more attractive uh, tax concessions and fiscal incentives. For instance, we should set up an office and have housing education and uh, start up uh, funds for them for talents or for industries uh, where the technological requirement is high. The government should lower the threshold so as to attract more talents to Hong Kong. Our um, um, population deficit will uh, replace our population surplus, and therefore the government must grab grasp this opportunity and formulate a good population policy. With these remarks, I support Mr. Yip Kwok Him's motion. Mr. Tong Yi Zee. President, on the 1st of December 2012, at a council sitting, a motion debate was uh, held on a review of our population policy. The intentions for a Mr. Stephen Lam said that all along the government has got a clear population policy objective, and that is to attract and retain quality um, manpower in Hong Kong so that uh, Hong Kong can be developed into a knowledge-based economy. Although the government has laid down the objective, do we have really the um, publishing policy and objectives, and are they do they dovetail, dovetail with each other? And as a policy objective, uh, in keeping with a uh, development of times, I think these are issues we have to address. In 1945, there were only 0 0.65 million people living in Hong Kong because of the Civil War, uh, the Great Leap Forward, and Cultural Revolution on the mainland. There was an influx of immigrants from the mainland into Hong Kong, and the population rapidly rose to 4 million in 1971. Our uh, economy started to take flight in the 1970s, and uh, we have seen a uh, rapid development of our population. We have uh, quite uh, satisfactory uh, growth in the number of births, and then um, in 2009, uh, our population mark reached, our population reached the 7 million mark. But due to rapid changes in society, we have seen a demographic change. 
fertility, fertility rate has dropped, and uh, the number of elderly persons have been increasing, and we have an imbalance in our demography. The low fertility rate is unhealthy. We cannot just rely on natural growth to replenish our uh, workforce. So the government should plan to see how uh, these 200,000 children born to non-local parents to come to Hong Kong so that they can contribute to our economy in the future. Many people uh, have asked the government to uh, fight for the right to vet single a one-way uh, permit to Hong Kong and uh, in the use of uh, the quota for family reunion. Although the government has said that the approval of one-way permits is um, within the uh, ambit of the main authorities, I still hope that our government can enhance communication with the central authorities and report to them our demographic development and our latest demand in um, our population. Whenever we had problems, the central authorities would launch measures to benefit us, such as SEPA and the individual uh, visit scheme to tide us over the difficult period. So I hope and expect the central authorities to listen to our request and make a appropriate adjustment to the one-way permit scheme and the quota scheme. The Census and Statistics Department announced the publishing projection in 2012 for um, 2012 to 2041. Uh, the uh, population would rise to um, 8.47 million. And uh, elderly persons will account for 30% of our population by that time. While we have to face the challenges brought about by an aging population, we should also study how we can make good use of the opportunities brought about by a silver hair economy. Developed economies such as the U.S. and Japan have um, commercialized the gray uh, the silver hair market, and we can consider how we can develop cultural industries to match this development so that we have concrete measures to help the business sector to tap into this sector of the market. The administration in the past had made a suggestions to central authorities on adjustment to the one-way permit scheme. I hope that this term of government can do the same when implementing our own population policy and related measures. The government should also consider concessions or incentives uh, such as uh, tax in incentives to boost our fertility rate so that we can have a healthier fertility rate and then we can replenish our workforce so that they can become an important force of economic development. Thank you. Ms. Priscilla Lung. Mr. President, at the start of the last session, we face soaring property prices. Many complained and that a lot of mainlanders who were rich came to Hong Kong to buy property, uh, all asked for um, building more homes. At that motion debate, I uh, pointed out this. How many public housing units should we produce? We have to consider the population in the coming decades. Um, on the 10th of November 2010, there was a motion on helping people to buy property. My amendment uh, was the uh, necessity of a population policy. In 2011, 12, and 13, at the policy address debate and budget debate, I raised the issue of population pop policy. It is the most important policy of Hong Kong. Any public policy 
whether it is health care, whether it is education, whether it is welfare, whether it is related to people's um, life, death, um, or transportation, or food. They are all related to poverty policy, uh, population policy. Um, the milk uh, formula policy, the milk formula issue, um, cross-border issue, um, closing schools down, baby boom, um, teachers, are all related to population. If you build more houses, there may be an excess supply if there is a downturn in population. There is a need to analyze our population, the democratic, the demographic structure, um, the uh, financial capability of the, these people. Um, we need a basis to formulate our policy. I want to tell this term of government. That we need a population policy. And in the last term, in 2012, uh, May, uh, there was finally a, a report on population planning, but it only touched the issue lightly. It was too little, too late, and there was no specific forecast. And the matter is now left to this term of the government, and I hope they will address this. There is a need to deal with the whole life cycle, and when it comes to aging, we need protection, uh, retirement protection for the elderly. District councillors, electrical members, um, work in the district, and one major task is to help the retired uh, to live happily. We should consider getting better um, lots for building retirement uh, estates. They are middle income people, they want to um, uh, have have a happy retirement. Uh, that is uh, grey hair business. Some members say that um, old people need to work even after the age of retirement. Now some after retirement may become caretakers, may become cleaning, uh, cleansing, uh, cleansing workers. But some are prepared for retirement. Say, for example, civil servants, they retire at the age, say, of 55. Some retire uh, at the age of 60. University professors retire at the age of 60. They have a lot of experience. They are very learned. They, can, they want to continue their work. They want to contribute to the society. I came across young people who have, whose parents are at the age uh, uh, whose parents are in the sixties, and they suggested whether uh, they their parents could choose uh, their retirement age. Say in the United States, um, in the universities, um, if you have high uh, performance, if you have good performance, you can continue to teach in the university and they. Um, the crew, air crew members of the uh, United of the airlines of the United States have no retirement age. The age of at the age of sixty, many can still contribute to society. For those who want to continue to work, shouldn't we uh, help them to continue to con contribute to society? Shouldn't they be allowed to continue working? Um, as for health care, well, I don't have much time. I'm not going to speak on health care. Many have already spoken on that. Uh, when it comes to death, there is a problem of uh, columbarium and uh, niches. Hong Kong has a shortage of housing for the living and housing for the dead. We can see from the data from 2007 to 2012, 4% of uh, the children 
or with uh, non-resident parents remain in Hong Kong, but 55% uh, of the children um, will return to Hong Kong according to um, a survey on their parents who are non-residents. We need to have good planning in terms of housing, in terms of education, health care, so on and so forth. In the coming 10 years, 20 years or 30 years, what will our population be? Do we have a population projection? We need to plan ahead. Thank you. Li Chuyen Yu. Mr. Li Chuyen. Thank you, Mr. President. Our population policy is just a confusion. It is a confusion. Everybody know what the problem is. The problem is that we have low fertility rate, we have an aging population, and there is a gap in the middle. Uh, there will not be enough young population. Uh, the dependency ratio will become very high, few young people supporting many old people. It is a con pop the population is a confusion because the administration puts emphasis on encouraging childbearing, but the position of the Labour Party is that childbearing is a personal choice. The government should reduce the pressure of raising children. And in doing so, the administration should provide a longer maternity leave. Say, for example, 12 weeks of full pay maternity leave instead, just, uh, instead of just a 10-week maternity leave um, with a pay of just uh, 80 percent. And child care is another issue in respect of encouraging childbearing. Can the primary schools provide um, extensive child care? The administration is just working on child care for low income families, but can, they, can child care service be more comprehensive so that women can go out to work? Um, child, if there is adequate child care, then women will not have to forsake their career. Another uh, area of confusion is the handling of ch children with one non-resident parent. Um, about 3% of the population have their um, spouse in the mainland. If one has a spouse, uh, one has a mainland wife, then you have to pay full cost for childbirth. In the past, um, the the they they just paid twenty thousand dollars. Now thirty nine thousand dollars for childbirth. The package is uh, two uh, medical examinations, and then um, the um, um, hospital stay is just um, a few thousand dollars, but the administration charged them thirty nine thousand for these mainland mothers, or uh, for these mainland women married to Hong Kong men. They have to pay thirty thousand dollars for childbirth. That is a penalty. They shouldn't penalize them as far as it is um, obstetric service. You want to encourage Hong Kong people to bear more children. These are Hong Kong men who have mainland wives. Their mainland wives come to Hong Kong to give birth, and their children will also come to Hong Kong. You should encourage them to 
the mainland wife to give birth in Hong Kong, and then at the age of zero, Hong Kong children, these Hong Kong children, will have their mothers with them. And um, if you don't encourage giving childbirth in Hong Kong, then the mothers will give birth in the mainland, and the child will be separate. The child uh, will either be raised in Hong Kong or in on the other side of the border, and there is a there will be split families. Uh, Mr. Ch Tony Chair asked for making use of making good use of children who have non-resident parents. But Hong Kong is be, will become a stepping stone for these children. They may have uh, they may have education in Hong Kong, but Hong, and then afterwards they may come back. They may go back to the mainland, or they may go overseas because their parents are non-residents of Hong Kong. Hong Kong will just a will be just a stepping stone for these children who are born to non-resident parents. Now, as for uh, Gary Fan's mo uh, amendment, we will um, abstain because it's not easy to change the basic law. And if it is to change the basic law, we should change uh, the casting of votes in two groups first. And there are 200,000 children of um, um, non residents which we can't touch whom we can't touch. We should stem the giving birth of children by non-residents in Hong Kong. As for importing overseas talents uh, by Mr. Tommy Chung, it seems that it's a full-scale importation of labor, and we're against it. We should not consider importing labor, foreign labor. As for the uh, capital investment entrance scheme is really stupid. If you they they allow to pay six point five million dollars to speculate on property, and now they can speculate, they can still speculate on stocks and other things. The six point five million dollars should be a scheme to set up companies to provide jobs, and then. The uh, immigration arrangement, the immigration permission, is based on the creation of jobs rather than on speculation on stocks. Your time is up. Hi. Mr. K. K. Fong, President. No, um, the, um, there was a candidate. Um, in a C election, who um, accused his opponent um, Henry Tang uh, of um, not working out a population policy. This candidate said that concerning the um, report on population policy, was it um, um, published? Uh, uh, nobody, uh, uh, nobody knows. And. Um, uh, he said he would very much want to know what progress had been made. Now, this candidate has been e elected. He's now the CE. What has he done? In fact, uh, this CE likes to set up commissions and committees uh, to delay things. Um, um, you know, we have the Economic Development Commission. We have the Commission on Standard Working Hours. We have this uh, steering um, committee on um, Population policy. So um, uh, committees are set up to study issues. Um, but what what has this uh, steering committee um, done? For example, um, is it that uh, Hong Kong people can have priority in using uh, our medical services and maternity services? And concern, um, from uh, concern taking forward the Guangdong scheme. Now, uh, um, luckily, there is this Guangdong scheme, and Leung, uh, C. Y. Leung has included this in his um, uh, report uh, on the work of the government in the first year. So, um, 
there are certain measures, for example, uh, um, like um, whether public hospitals uh, should um, refuse to accept um, these uh, doubly non-permanent resident pregnant women and so on and so forth. But then um, the so-called election platform was absent on uh, seeking an amendment to the basic law um, to deal with um, the problem of um, doubly non permanent uh, babies born of doubly non permanent resident pregnant women. Um, uh, of course, and of course, um, the, uh, he has never said anything about um, trying to give Hong Kong SAL government a say on the uh, OWP system. Now, in fact, um, uh, our population policy is only a uh, set of piecemeal measures. Now, we we shouldn't just look at uh, how population can contribute to GDP. We should be talking about, we should be looking at um, demographic changes and then a suitable planning um, so that uh, people's quality of living can be enhanced and, economic, and the economy can continue to develop. Now, in fact, um, um, last year the population was about 7.13 million, and in 2039, 28 years later, the population should be about 8.89 million. In other words, 1.17 million people extra, uh, a growth of 600,000 people uh, per year, including number of OWP uh, people on OWPs and also talents. Um, and concerning uh, um. Pre uh, mainland pregnant women um, coming to Hong Kong to give birth to babies. 50% of these type 2 babies, we believe, will come to Hong Kong to study or to work uh, later. And the birth rate in Hong Kong is on the low side. Um, uh, we have um, a deteriorating um, aging problem. Uh, in 2009, we have... Um, 13% elderly people, and this will, is going to increase to 28%. And the dependency ratio... Um, in 2009, uh, the ratio is 171, and then it will be 454 in 2039. So um, we have the aging population problem, we have a low birth rate, and um, all these will have um, an impact on our future welfare system, housing, and, and other policies. The ADPL is of the view that the government should no longer plan in a short-sighted and piecemeal manner. There should be a high-level dedicated commission to work out a coherent population policy, um, to um, work out suitable policies to cope with demographic changes, for example, from uh, land formation, welfare, education, and so on and so forth. We need to um, cope with the long-term development of um, um, Hong Kong, and um, I think such policy should be reviewed and updated on a rolling basis at once every two to three years. The ADPL is of the view that there should be uh, measures to encourage um, birth, for example, subs uh, um, allowances, um, 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 lengthening the maternity leave. For example, Singapore has um, 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 implemented a series of measures uh, to encourage birth, and as a result, the birth rate is um, um, consistently um, about of 1.2 percent. So um, it's important that the birth rate be um, increased. ADPL is of the view that there should be um, um, an allowance for um, parents of um, babies. There should be a, a one-off um, allowance of $10,000 to um, the parents to encourage births and to reduce the financial burden of um, the parents. And also, there should be um, um, policies to support families uh, and to take care of elderly persons. And at the moment, we have the MPF system, but of course, the accrued benefits um, are not enough. Um, then also, um, um, such benefits um, are affected by market volatilities. And so there should be a universal retirement protection system. In the uh, short term, the HKMA should be brought in and... Um, there should be MPF products with low administrative um, fees and linked to the um, rate of return of uh, exchange fund investments. Mr. Ronnie Tong. Yes, um, President. I think um, this topic 
formulating a population policy can be misleading. In fact, population changes, demographic graphic changes are. are Are neutral in nature, but when we talk about a policy, we're talking about strategic planning to change um, the situation in society. President, I um, am reading a book by Ben Brown, an internationally renowned writer, and in the book he says that. Population increase or expansion is a mathematical、um, theory, and、um, is a phenomenon that can't be changed. Now, in the book, the um, um, hero、uh, wants to kill most people、um, in the world to control. The population in the world, so that that you can say that's a policy. Now, of course,、um, uh, President, I'm not saying that、uh, um, we should kill、uh, half the people in Hong Kong or half the people on Earth.、Uh, I think we are talking about、uh, entry and exit of people, and also um, pop, um, uh, uh, immigration policies. But I want to say that.、Um, It's difficult for a population policy to really affect、um, a population. In fact,、um, it's important、uh, uh, when、uh, in a place we have to look at resources, and then we have to look at population. We need to assess changes in resources. We need to assess changes in population, and if mistakes are made in these areas, then all other policies will be、um, flawed. President. Just look at the present. Now, the average life expectancy、um, uh, in、uh, Hong Kong is eighty-two years old. But then, for those who are ha, who need to queue up for um, um, places in homes for the elderly, the average time waiting time is three years. And so, last year, over five thousand elderly persons died when they were waiting for. Elderly home places. So, this is a fact, and it shows that our welfare policies are are divorced from our uh, population um, projections. No, but in in fact.、Um, Uh, we in Hong Kong,、um, we have a lot of reserves. We have a lot of money, but we don't know how to make use of this money to meet the demands of、um, our population. So, projecting population growth and the resources and services needed are um 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 a science. And precision is required, but then now we、um, have learned that some of、um, many of the figures、um, in surveys have been made up,、um, or, or you may say, oh, the, they are、um, the inter-、um, those, those、um, are responsible for the work are only students. We should forgive them; they are inexperienced. But I want to say that mistakes in、um, population projections will mean that.、Um, All our policies will be flawed, and our services cannot meet demand. For example, our housing policy, our services, education services, medical services, all these will be affected. We are an a rapidly aging community. Now, according to the UN、um, definition, if The elderly、um, population accounts for seven percent of total population. That's an aging society, and now we are over ten percent. And in fact, if、um, the percentage exceeds twenty percent, and then uh, uh, this is really、um, uh, an aged society. But then、uh, you know that in、um, by twenty thirty one, one quarter of our population will be elderly persons. And how come we we are just um. Uh, sitting here in a, a very complacent manner, the CS for A has a steering committee to、um, look at this issue. I don't,、um, I, I don't know how long 
um, uh, um, it takes for this um, uh, committee to complete this work. We have to seize all the opportunities um, available to us. Now, according to um, many actuaries, we only have a five-year window. And if we miss that window, then we'll have to put in a lot more resources and a lot more work in order to achieve the same target. And we've already um, 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 passed um, half that window. So how long is it going to take CSYA for the steering committee to complete this work? And, um, you know, um, the government has to plan ahead. This government doesn't only look at the present moment. It has to look at um, the community, what a community needs 10 years, 20 years down the road. We have to make use of our resources to um, cope with demographic um, changes. So use of resources, deployment of resources also represents a population policy. All, all um, our policies are affected by population changes. I hope that the CS4A can, in her response, um, assure us that we are beginning to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Is it that we will uh, be um, um, uh, leaving this tunnel? Is it that we will have policies to cope with um, a rapidly aging problem? What? Mr. Tem Yo Chong, well, the 2003 pol Population Policy Report uh, maps out the uh, target for our population policy uh, to ensure that we have the right quality and quantity uh, of population to uh, support Hong Kong as a world class city. There were over 33 recommendations to uh, direct. Uh, development or the trend in our population development. However, in the past 10 years, I believe uh, insufficient has been uh, measures have been taken to tackle this problem. Hong Kong is a city of uh, long life expectancy. It's expected by 2041, the average life expectancy of males uh, will be um, 84.4 years. Uh, for female, the life expectancy is even higher, 90.8 years old. So uh, please don't uh, wish uh, people uh, uh, can live as long as 100 years. And our fertility rate has consistently declined, leading to a decline in the uh, number of workforce, the size of the workforce. That means our population is aging very rapidly. According to the administration, by 2041, our workforce would drop to 3.4 million. And uh, the uh, this is an opposite trend to the uh, trend to our this is an opposite trend to that of our population growth. As a result, the GPD and the uh, domestic consumption market would be affected. As a result, our tax revenue will be lower, and even the fiscal sustainability of uh, the government would be affected. All these have to be uh, studied in depth by the government in uh, formulating a population policy. To ensure that we have sufficient uh, workforce, we must have a policy that can uh, unleash uh, the um, productivity of the elderly. We suggest that uh, enterprises employ elderly persons to work or help enterprises uh, read distribute workload, improve uh, the environment of workload, or so as to uh, accommodate elderly persons. At present, uh, elderly uh, persons are not uh, assisted in the workplace. We should uh, enhance or in uh, help uh, elderly persons to rejoin the workforce. There should be training and counseling and uh, job information to the elderly. 
and uh, even minor matters such as uh, taking out of uh, labor insurance and uh, elimination of age discrimination. The government should encourage um, NGOs to uh, recruit elderly volunteers. After all, they are very experienced in life. They can choose to contribute, continue to contribute uh, to society. It is an inevitable trend that our population is aging. We should allow our elderly persons to continue to work, and uh, we must have people-oriented policies. We must continue to upgrade the quality life of everyone in Hong Kong, the elderly persons in particular. We should uh, provide sufficient uh, financial security for them. So DB is of the view that we should introduce universal retirement protection as soon as possible. There should be a three-tier non-contributory universal retirement protection scheme to uh, lower administrative costs, to boost uh, return, and to uh, facilitate elderly persons to retire in their hometown. The Fujian and Guangdong scheme should be extended to other provinces as well. The government should also enhance the uh, development of welfare and social facilities. There should be a five-year rolling plan, and there must be a subsidy scheme for elderly persons uh, to improve uh, services for uh, this age group. The DB has introduced a three-tier non-contributory uh, retirement scheme. I'd like to tell you the details. The MPF has been in place for more than a decade for those uh, that are very close to retirement. Uh, there is too little to help them. In order to enhance social s financial security for this group of people, we believe that uh, under the uh, OH pension, on the basis of the OH allowance scheme and the uh, OH living allowance scheme, there should be an other supplement for elderly persons to help them. And uh, application should be on a personal basis. And first year, uh, no means test needs needed. So long as you are, you reach 65 years old, you are eligible. The amount will be equivalent to the current OH allowance. Level 2 means test required, and uh, the level will be uh, similar to the OH living uh, allowance, and that it will be double of that of the uh, OPA. And then uh, level 3 uh, means test needed, and the asset uh, limit would be uh, halved. And uh, the uh, payment will be equivalent to three times that of OH allowance. This will not affect the elderly person's eligibility for CSSA and disability allowance. Uh, for um, el uh, elders can choose to remain in the current system if they don't want to opt for the new system. According to our survey, most members of the public welcome or have reservations to the setting up of a universal retirement scheme. However, they believe that the government should contribute to um, uh, to people's retirement as well. So, the DAB's um, proposal will ensure that the government will show them more in providing for uh, elders' retirement, and we believe that this will be financially sustainable, and it can better. Um, suit the actual circumstances of Hong Kong. Uh, because of the aging population, we have many challenges, and we must plan ahead and be well prepared so that Hong Kong can uh, continue to take the lead in this very competitive uh, world environment, and uh, we can see continuous improvement of the quality of life of uh, people in Hong Kong. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Rang Kwok Hong? Coincidentally, I uh, speak after Tam, Mr. Tam Yu Chung again. Of course, he is invincible. Uh, what he told us just now uh, was first uh, discussed in 1994. Mr. Lam, how long, how, how many years ago? Well, in 1997, you were still a very a highly valued um person by Mr. Six Chung and you were responsible for the elderly commission. You have uh, chaired the commission for so many years. Well, when you were so treasured uh, by uh, Mr. Siwai Tung, why couldn't you implement what you suggested just now? 
A few months ago, I filibustered here. I was uh, severely attacked by you, saying that I uh, was a sinner, I was a culprit, and then uh, the president cut short the filibuster, and you have uh, the face to speak on this motion. Well, I was about to leave, and then I uh, saw Mr. Tam speak, and I decided to follow. This is very shameful and disgraceful. You uh, got so many uh, owners, a uh, gold bohemia, silver bohemia, metal, bronze bohemia, bro uh, metal. You are servants of uh, the government or this administration, yet you are not able to do something for the community. Priscilla, I don't know where she is now. She's got a uh, sofa, bohemia medal. Mr. Lang Kuang, please uh, speak on the motion on formulating publishing policy. All right, uh, Tim Yuchu only talked about how to support the um, population which is already here. Is it correct or not? All right, he talks about supporting uh, people who are already aging. You have to act swiftly. Uh, your uh, emperor, Si Wan Leung, uh, said that uh, he would launch one policy or one measure whenever it was ready. All right, why don't you give everybody $3,000 for everyone? How much will be the bill? How much does it cost you? And that will be easier for you to uh, improve the current system on that basis. The CS for A is here. How much money does it cost? The so-called three-tier system proposed by Tem Yu Chong, does it cost nothing? Uh, people have uh, show you the calculations and you disregarded it. And in some people, uh, even LP, is saying that money should be handed out. And Nelson Chow uh, said that I have a better plan, but uh, there won't be any consensus before 2017. I think he has leaked the secret out. Says for A, you are very competent, you are very uh, strong. The government should be here to tell us what it intends to do and consult us. When are going to uh, conduct the um, public engagement exercise? You ask the Poverty Commission to do something, but it doesn't. It isn't the government. The government uh, used to consult the community with a white paper. All right, there's something in uh, the colonial past. Now you uh, just uh, publish a consultation document, and in three months' time you can uh, complete what you want to do. Can we have something before the end of 2017? If not, then next year I will filibuster again. Honestly, President. An elderly gentleman fell well uh, at the at the lift lobby. He asked me uh, to uh, fight for him. He said uh, he had only got the OH pension. I said, uh, "What about the uh, OH living allowance?" He said, "It's so complicated. I don't know how to fill it out." But then his constituency has got a DAB member. Well, you've got banners as saying that you have successfully um, fought. For uh, OH living allowance, but uh, the matter is not over. The asset, uh, the means test will start next March. Some people might uh, jump from height because of that. Even if you are not generous, you should not introduce something that cause elderly persons to end their lives. Before Siwa Leung came to power. He talked about a scoring system. I heard him say so. Uh, he uh, said that, uh, well, well, he was also a, a, a valued person of uh, Six Tones administration. Let me tell you this. He is not a person with honor. Even uh, before he said that he would not run in the CA race for the nth term, not even in the nth term, he said that there should be a scoring scheme and Hong Kong uh, should be the gatekeeper when it comes to 
immigration policy. Says you know Siwa Leung well. Please tell us in your reply whether he has said something of this kind. Why was he willing to say that uh, before he said that he would not uh, run for the CE even uh, for the nth term in the nth term? You don't have to look up that booklet. I have checked it already. He's not a man with own with a sense of honor. Before he came to office, he uh, sounded as if he was invincible. There is no point for you to check that booklet. Well, uh, he said so in a uh, radio program with commercial radio. We asked him to look after the elders. He failed to do that. We asked him to uh, play the role of a gatekeeper. Well, go back and ask your boss. When did he say this? About 10 years ago. So, all right, different people are cheating. Well, the uh, loyalists uh, cheated, the, cheated the people, and the king cheated the people. Well, if he doesn't step down, we don't know what the loyalists doesn't, don't know what to do. They are doomed, no matter whether they support or not support him. Uh, Mr. Fernando Chang, thank you, Mr. President. Hong Kong does have a population policy. Ten years ago, we had a population policy, and there was a report at that time. The report was uh, uh, led by, uh, the, or rather, the report was compiled by a team led by um, Donald Zhang. He was the uh, CS, and uh, he uh, led the team. And then uh, when Henry Tang was the uh, CS, he also uh, compiled a report in 2012. Our concern is that fertility rate is declining. If there is no um, immigration, then the population will decline. Aging, the population aging will become more serious. The report on population policy puts emphasis on the economy, whether it's demogra the demographic structure or number of people. Um, they are concerned about the implication on the economy. And uh, if you can remember that there is a foreign domestic helper levy that is that was arising from population policy, and uh, because of strong reaction from the community, the administration stopped that levy, and um, it, it now has been permanently uh, suspended, and there is also. Uh, the quality uh, migrant scheme, there was the um, capital investment entrance scheme. But in fact, we are just attracting investors from the mainland. As for those uh, investors who are not from the mainland, in fact, they are also mainlanders. They bought a passport from a third world country and then invest $6.5 million in Hong Kong. And they, they just bought a flat and then property prices rose. Finally, they changed the policy and the money is uh, investing in property is not counted, but they can still speculate on stocks and that uh, amount of money is counted. As for the um, negative impact of an aging population on the economy and also the economic difficulties arising from um, democratic structure and demographic demographic structure it all boils down to the economic impacts and what should we do let us uh, limit um, the welfare of these people now, as for new immigrants, um, they are concerned about quality. They are concerned 
and that these new immigrants are poor, they're low-income earners, uh, they come because of cross-border marriages. We can't control the 150 uh, immigrants per day. Uh, they dare not uh, get back the power from the CPG. They are too scared, and therefore they restrict them on the uh, qualification or eligibility for welfare. So instead of one year of stay, they um, they now require nine years, uh, seven years of stay in order to get um, welfare. And you also impose a levy on foreign domestic helpers. Um, they impose as a levy uh, on the employers, but they cut the minimum wage of the foreign domestic helpers by the same amount as the levy. That was really unsightly. That's really ugly. Uh, that uh, was purely about economic interest. That was not about justice and equality and fairness. They just looked at uh, money. They were money minded. They were about economic development. But what's the point? Where is the money? After uh, the handover, how much has GDP increased? And yet we have a yawning, yawning poverty gap. Where is the money? The money goes into the hands of the minority, just 1% of the population. Restriction on welfare, restriction on health care. As a result, children born by mainland mothers in Hong Kong, the mainland mothers will have to pay a very high uh, medical fee for giving birth. Yet we open our door to those who can afford uh, paying the medical fees. That population policy is really mean. And I hope that Mrs. Lam will not adopt such a mindset. You should not adopt the mindset of social Darwinism, which is inclined towards economic uh, benefits only. The policy is really unfair and unjust. If you really want to have po a population policy, you better deal with uh, retirement, long-term care, the needs of cross-border families. We need uh, our population to be healthy. We need uh, our population to be dealt with justly. We shouldn't just work for the big Consortia, and at the end of the day, uh, money goes to a few hands only. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Kwok Kim, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, President. Eight members have moved um, amendments to my motion. I'm grateful to um, members. These amendments are moved by different members. And three amendments um, uh, touch on uh, vetting um, of uh, one-way permit arrivals. For example, uh, Dr. Kenneth Chan um, talks about um, 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 participating in the vetting and approval of one-way permit applications. Mr. James Toe uh, talks about um, striving for the right to vet and approve one-way permit applications. And uh, Mr. Gary Fan also mentions um, um, vetting 
of um, uh, approving of one-way permit applications. Um, Article 22 of the Basic Law states that for entry into the Hong Kong SA, are people from other parts of China must apply for approval. And the number of persons who enter the region for the purpose of settlement shall be determined by the competent authorities of the CPG after consulting the government of the region. So, Article 22 um, contains this paragraph on entry into the Hong Kong SAR by people from other parts of China. And in fact, the NPCSC gave an explanation of this paragraph on the 26th of June 1999. According to the interpretation, for people from other parts of China, if they want to enter, into the Hong Kong SAR, they need to apply for approval. This means uh, people from the various provinces, municipalities, including um, Chinese um, children born of Hong Kong SAR permanent residents. If they want to enter into the Hong Kong SAR um, for various reasons, then they need to apply to the um, relevant authorities for approval and they need to possess relevant documents issued by those authorities in order to enter into the Hong Kong SAR. So concerning these uh, provinces, autonomous regions, municipalities, uh, the people in these um, places, including Chinese um, uh, uh, children born of Hong Kong permanent residents, if they want to enter into the Hong Kong SAR and if they haven't um, obtained approval um, by the competent authorities, and um, that would that it would be unlawful for them to enter into the Hong Kong SAR. So uh, this is the interpretation by the NPCSC in 1999. So the one-way permit system is so, um, or the one-way permit is a uh, legal document held by mainlanders who, um, who wish to um, leave um, the mainland. Uh, the basic law and the um, NPCSC's interpretation merely reiterate the fact that one-way permits are issued and approved by um, the mainland authorities, and so the Hong Kong SAR cannot take part in the um, vetting or the approving of the um, one-way permit applications. And... and uh, um, so the DAB can't support the amendments about taking part in the uh, vetting of the applications or taking back the um, the the the, um, the authority to vet the um, uh, applications. And for the other amendments, um, uh, we will abstain on voting on some of them. And then Mr. Long's amendment and Mr. Ip's amendment, they um, haven't altered. The uh, meaning of the original motion, they uh, have, they they merely enrich the content of the original motion, and so DAB will support these amendments. The Chief Secretary for Administration, President, I'm very obliged to uh, more than uh, 20 members who have spoken uh, on this motion debate, giving us very valuable comments. Well, I can agree to each and every uh, view expressed. I can uh, show you that most of the issues will be covered in the consultation document to be issued sooner, uh, later this year. Since Dr. Fernando Zhang uh, go back to history and uh, refer to the 2003 Population Policy Report, uh, he said that back then uh, the uh, objective of our publishing policy is just to uh, support economic development. Well, in my opening remarks, already said that we're going to uh, take care of both uh, social and economic development. So Dr. Van Aljuan can rest assured. In my opening remarks, I said that population policy covers uh, 
spectrum of things, and this has been reflected in speeches made by members. We cannot tackle all the issues in one go. We have to set priorities. In tackling these issues, we have two important considerations. First, as uh, stressed by Mr. Lo Wai Kwok, we have to consider both the quality and quantity of our population so that uh, we will have both. In the past 10 years, uh, the uh, economic growth or is roughly f uh, 40% per year. One was due, 1% was due to uh, growth in our labor force, 3% due to productivity. Our workforce will drop from 3.5 million to 3.37 million, aside from 2018 uh, to 2031. So we have to replenish our workforce. And through training and education and appropriate importation of talents, we can then improve the quality of our manpower. After we've exhausted all our efforts to uh, train local talents, to give them priority in uh, employment and development, we have to incorporate talents from the mainland and uh, overseas so that Hong Kong will be a meeting place for uh, outstanding talents to boost our competitiveness. We have uh, earmarked some priorities and we are going to consult the public later this year. In March, when I attended a special house committee of this council, I uh, mentioned a few important issues. Now, the uh, scope of consultation will uh, mainly cover four areas, and I think they can uh, cover most of the items referred to by members. Uh, first, uh, when we are faced with a shrinking workforce, we should uh, focus on our uh, local workforce first. We should give more opportunities to elders and women, and we should boost our productivity of the workforce. We should improve uh, the match between uh, jobs and uh, people, and we should also help uh, ethnic minorities to incorporate into society in uh, work and in education. This will promote society harmony and also inclusiveness. And they can also be an important uh, driving force in further economic development of Hong Kong. As uh, many members said, we have uh, 200,000 babies born to non-local parents in Hong Kong, and uh, most uh, members were concerned about their education in Hong Kong. In fact, uh, some of these babies will choose to come back to Hong Kong for education, and this uh, will bring pressure on our education system. We appreciate our concerns of the community and will give priority to the needs of local children first. Because our fertility rate is low and according to the Census and Statistic Department survey, uh, the among the parents of uh, these babies have uh, quite um, uh, uh, satisfactory uh, education uh, qualifications and as mentioned by Mr. Tony Z, we should try to uh, absorb them into our uh, community so that they become new blood. And we should continue to uh, tap uh, the sources of um, manpower from uh, other places. And as mentioned by some members, we face manpower shortage in some industry in Hong Kong. It is important that we have the most outstanding uh, talents in Hong Kong so as to sustain our competitiveness. While we have a few uh, schemes for importation of talents, they only account for a very small proportion of our workforce. For instance, in N2012 under the uh, GEP and uh, QTS, uh, talents work in Hong Kong only stood at 87,000, accounting for 2.3% of our workforce. Uh, the whole world and mainland cities are scrambling for talents. Should Hong Kong be more aggressive and proactive in attracting talents to Hong Kong? Mr. Martin Liu uh, quoted some uh, measures adopted by Singapore as examples, and I think we should uh, um, think more carefully about these uh, measures. It's true that we should improve our services to facilitate talents to come and stay in Hong Kong. Mr. Kwok 
Yun uh, talked about the uh, shortage in uh, school places of international schools. The Education Bureau has completed a consultancy on this issue, hoping that uh, the uh, relevant uh, supporting measures can be implemented very soon. Yes, we should attract uh, outstanding and high-tech talents to Hong Kong, and we should also see how we can ease uh, labor shortage in some industries. While we have the supplementary uh, labor importation scheme in 2012, there were only about 2,000 of these important workers in Hong Kong, accounting for about 0.1% of our total workforce. We do agree that we should give priority to local residents when it comes to employment, but we have to understand that there is structural labor shortage in some industries. I think Mr. Tommy Jung uh, has reflected uh, the views of the industry and given us a lot of examples. When uh, the supply of local labor cannot meet demand, we have to think of ways to address that problem. Uh, using cons the construction industry as an example, although in the past few years, uh, the um, CIC has adopted various measures to enhance training of local workers, uh, labor supply is still very tight. Although uh, there are controversies in the community when it re comes to importation of low-skilled workers, we should not evade this issue. We should allow the public to debate on it. And uh, Mr. White Kwok has mentioned another point about uh, source of manpower. We have uh, children uh, born to Hong Kong residents overseas because uh, they were born overseas, they do not have residency in Hong Kong. But I think they have ties in Hong Kong, and we should explore how we can attract them back to Hong Kong and contribute to our society. And we should also have uh, policies uh, to encourage uh, the public to raise children. Uh, the uh, policies and measures to be adopted can be very wide, as can be seen in other countries. Uh, for instance, uh, child care services and 15 years of free education proposed by Mr. Ip, uh, scientifically assisted uh, um, conception uh, services proposed by Mr. Uh, James Toe and a newborn baby subsidy proposed by uh, Madam Yip May Kun. I think we should consult the uh, younger generation so that we know what measures will be useful for them to encourage them to uh, raise children. But as we all know, there is no free lunch. Any measures that uh, require the government to provide cash subsidy or to uh, ask enterprises uh, to uh, give uh, support to uh, employees, that means uh, more uh, public expenditure and uh, also burden on enterprises. Would the public be willing to foot the bill? I think we should consult the public and come to a consensus. As mentioned by many members, we have to be prepared for an aging population. More than uh, 10 years down the road, myself and many members here will be elderly persons aged over 65 years old. So we should not just fight for the welfare of uh, the current generation of elderly persons, we should also prepare for our future retirement. To prepare for an aging society, you may um, things like um, retirement protection and um, elderly services would come to mind, as suggested by Mr. Tenkapu. Professor Nelson Chow is now conducting a study on retirement protection. It's expected that the report will be available in one year's time. As pointed on my, by Ms. Sit Ho, once the report is available, I'd like to consult the public as soon as possible so that we can have a full debate and uh, we can then uh, forge a consensus. We have introduced many measures to improve the quality and facilities of elderly homes. I hope that um, we can uh, have uh, more discussions on how we can help elderly persons to uh, age in the community. But it's true that facilities and quality of um, elderly care homes are, should be improved. However, we should not uh, regard elderly persons as uh, burden to society. Please don't think that this problem 
is a disaster, as said by some member uh, of the persons are a treasure to us. And uh, Dr. Priscilla Lan said that we should encourage our elders to work as our volunteers. We should also tap into the silver hair market and uh, develop products that suit their needs and uh, so that we can promote uh, the econo economic development. We should encourage uh, people to plan for their retirement as soon as possible. We should provide better support to uh, Hong Kong residents who have chosen to spend their uh, retirement years on the mainland. I'd like to comment or respond to uh, comments made on the one-way permit scheme. The scheme will allow many residents to come in an orderly manner for family reunion with approval by mainland authorities from the 1st of July 1997 uh, to uh, now. Uh, 716,000 mainlanders have come to Hong Kong on one-way permits. About one half, or that is 49.4 percent of them, are spouses of Hong Kong residents, and 48.8 uh, percent are children of Hong Kong residents. 1.2 percent of them are parents of Hong Kong residents. So uh, the one-way permit scheme is really a scheme for family reunion. Some members. Uh, recommended that uh, Hong Kong pe government should be involved in the vetting of such applications. But as pointed out by Mr. Kwok uh the uh, reception and uh, vetting and approval of such applications are for many authorities. So there is no question of uh, our administrating striking for the right to vet and approve cases. Uh, the mainland has got a very open and transparent uh, vetting um, uh, scheme, and there should not be any administrative measures to interfere. Of course, uh, our government will um, issue uh, certificates to prove that indeed uh, the applicants are children of local residents, and will also help to verify the uh, uh, truthness of information provided by applicants. And Mr. James Tu uh, said that if the administration or the local authority, the main authorities are willing to respond to our aspirations when it comes to the implementation of the scheme, he would not insist on um, grabbing the uh, vetting and approval rights. This, the answer is in a positive. For instance, they have uh, waived the restriction that only one child can accompany. Um, the uh, spouse to come to Hong Kong, and during the waiting period, uh, spouses waiting for the uh, one-way permit can come to Hong Kong on two-way permits and uh, on uh, visiting visas. Uh, for uh, children that are not yet of age, uh, they can uh, have uh, multiple entry uh, visits to Hong Kong, uh, each, uh, and each time they can uh, stay for up to 90 days. For adult children who would like to come to Hong Kong to uh, for family reunion, well, starting from 2011, 1st of April, uh, these adult children can apply for one-way permits in an orderly manner. Uh, the main authorities will make use of the unused quota under the OWPS and allow uh, these adult children to apply to Hong Kong. Ms. Claudia Mo. Call this scheme a way to affect our ideology for a vote rigging and uh, for the Communist Chinese Communist Party to take control in Hong Kong. I'm afraid I cannot accept such uh, uh, unfounded rumors. This will only split our society and cause uh, uh, cause uh, unnecessary uh, panic. Uh, regarding. Um, the fiscal aspect of the matter, uh, Mr. James so said that we should have a fund to take care of uh, the needs of uh, the uh, future elders. It's true that uh, there will be greater demand for uh, medical and uh, social services for the uh, for elders. However, we have to live within our means. We should not. Uh, uh, cast an um, 
a necessary burden on future governments. In the 2013-14 policy address, uh, the C has announced that a working group will be set up to be led by the uh, permanent secretary uh, for uh, treasury for the treasury to see how we can have better planning uh, for financial undertaking to take care of elder person elderly persons in the future. It will uh, assess uh, future needs and also changes in government revenue. Will uh, make reference uh, to overseas measures. Uh, the working group was set up in June this year. Expected that the report can be made to the CE by the end of this year. Uh, there's a suggestion that a seed fund be set up for universal retirement protection. As I said, Professor Chow has started a study on a similar subject. It will be completed by the end of next year, and the government will um, consider recommendations and report to see how we can better provide for uh, for people's uh, retirement. I'm sure uh, the proposal made by Tam Yu Chung on behalf of DAB will be considered by Professor Chow. Once again, I'd like to thank members for your valuable comments. Although uh, members may have different uh, positions when it comes to various issues, I think we all have the welfare of the community in mind. I look forward to your participation in the coming public engagement exercise. I hope that in the community we can have an equally enthusiastic debate and we can explore how we can uh, maintain our vibrancy and momentum uh, so that Hong Kong will be a good place, will be a home to everybody, and where we can uh, work and live and enjoy our retirement. We're going to explore a series of uh, measures and policies so that uh, in the next step we will announce uh, these specific measures to the public. Thank you. Dr. Kenneth Chen, you can move your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Dave Kwok-Him's motion be amended. I now propose the question two, and that is that the amendment moved by Dr. Kenneth Chan to Mr. Kwok-Him's motion be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Mr. Wycock claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
，开始表决。请各位核对表。Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members returned from FCs. Thirty-one present, sixteen yes, eight noes, seven abstentions. Members returned from GCs. Twenty-nine present, sixteen yes, one no, eleven abstentions. The question is agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Andrew Le, Mr. President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the motion on formulating a population policy, the Council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has rung for one minute. I now propose the question that I said the motion moved on. Mr. Long be passed. Does any member wish to speak? Those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against, I think the question is agreed by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. I order that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the motion on formulating a population policy, the council shall proceed forthwith to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. Members have already been formed. As Mr. Kenneth Chan's amendment has been passed, Mr. Frankie Yick has withdrawn his amendment. Mr. Tommy Jung, therefore, may not move the amendment to Mr. Frankie Yick's amendment. Mr. James Toe, as Dr. And if Chen's amendment has been passed, I've given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Dave Kohim's motion, as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen, be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose to question two, and that is that Mr. James Toe's amendment to Mr. Dave Kohim's motion, as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen, be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think Mr. Kwokim claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC, thirty-one present, thirteen yes, ten noes, eight abstentions. Members return from. She sees twenty nine present, fifteen yes, one no, twelve abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority, respectively, of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Miss Claudia Mo, um, Mr. Kenneth Chen's um, amendment has been passed. I've given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Dave Kwok-Hyun's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose to question to you, and that is that the um, that Ms. Claudia Mo's, Claudia Mo's amendment to Mr. Dave Kwok-Hyun's motion as amended by Dr. Kenneth Chen be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, I thank Mr. Dave Kwok-Hyun. The division. The bell will ring for one minute.
开始表决。Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC thirty-one present, eight yes, fifteen noes, eight abstentions. Members from GC twenty-nine present, fourteen yes, four noes, ten abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Yip Kin Yun. Um, as um, Mr. Kenneth Chen's amendment has been um, passed, uh, I've given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Ip Kok Hyun's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose to question two, and that is that Mr. Ip Kin Yun's amendment to Mr. Ip Kok Hyun's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think Mr. Lo Wei Kwok claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC thirty-one percent, twenty yes, one no, ten abstentions. Members from GC twenty-nine percent, nineteen yes. Nine abstentions. The question is agreed by majority of two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Gary Fan, Mr. Gary Fan, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Yip Kin Yun have been passed, I've given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment. You may now move your revised amendment, President. I move that Mr. Yip Kok Hyun's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Yip Kin Yun be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose to question two that is that Mr. Gary Fan's amendment to Mr. Yip Kok Hyun's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Yip Kin Yun be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? Mr. Kwok Kim claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Mr. Sin Chung Kai, why are you standing? Voting begins. Members, please 
members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC, 31 present, 7 yes, 17 no's, 7 abstentions. Members from GC's, 29 present, 10 yes, 6 no's, 12 abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Ms. Sit Ho, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Ip Kin Yun have been passed, you may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that Mr. Ip Kok Him's motion, as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chan and Mr. Ip Kin Yun, be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you that is that Ms. Sit Ho's amendment to Mr. Ip Kok Him's motion, as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chan and Mr. Ip Kin Yun, be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against? I think Ms. Sitho claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FC, 31 present, 11 yes, 13 no's, 7 abstentions. Members from GC's, 29 present, 17 yes, 3 no's, 8 abstentions. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Kennifler, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Ip Kin Yun have been passed, you may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that Mr. Ip Kok Him's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Ip Kin Yun be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you that is that Mr. Kenneth Lang's amendment to Mr. Ip Kok Him's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen and Mr. Ip Kin Yun be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against. I think the question is Steve Kwakim claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FCs, 31 present, 19 yes, 12 abstentions. Members from 
G's is thirty percent, twenty yes, nine abstentions. The question is agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Kwok Kim, you have two minutes um, forty-two seconds to reply. Thank you, President. A total of twenty-six members spoke uh, um, in the motion debate. Now, Mr. Leung Kwok Hong um, um, said a lot of nonsense. He um, 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 confused the right and the wrong. Other members all um, um, made um, 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 their suggestions. Uh, although we may not be able to see eye to eye on all these suggestions, um, I think the suggestions are useful uh, reference for the government. Uh, the DAB supports Mr. Yip Kin Yun's amendment and Mr. Kenneth Leung's amendment, but then we abstained from voting on the two amendments mainly because Mr. Kenneth Chen's amendment has been passed. And with regard to the fourth point in Mr. Kenneth um, Chen's um, amendment, uh, in fact, we um, uh, have a lot of reservations. Um, it's about discussing with the CPG uh, to enable the Hong Kong SDL government to participate in the vetting and approval of one-way permit applications. And so um, we will uh, abstain from voting on, on um, the amended motion later. The CS4A has said that there will be a public consultation exercise in the near future. And I hope that um, we can all um, uh, play an active part in this um, consultation exercise. We hope that um, the government can formulate a population policy that can suit the needs of Hong Kong. Um, and I'll put a question to you, and that is that the motion moved from Mr. Kwok Kim as amended by Mr. Kenneth Chen, Mr. Ip Kin Yun, and Mr. Kenneth Leung be passed. Will those in the favor please raise their hands? Those against? I think Mr. Ip Kwok Kim claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Voting begins. Uh, today. President, yes, Mr. Chong Shu Khan. Right, members, please check your votes if. Um, If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. Members from FCs, 31 present, 18 yes, 13 abstentions. Members from GCs, 28 present, 14 yes, 1 no, 12 abstentions. The question is not agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended negatived. I now adjourn the council until 11 a.m. on Wednesday, 10th July 2013.